career-high 357 yards passing last week. For Indiana and Blake Powers, this guy has found a way to make some big plays. 18 touchdown passes already, which ranks him third in the nation. The other half of Indiana's success comes in size extra tall, 6'7 freshman receiver James Hardy. Kickoff on the way. Let's go back to Mike and John in the ESPN Plus Game Day Studio. Get you ready for Indiana and Iowa in a Big Ten battle here in Iowa City. Randy Wright, Craig Kishon, Quint Kesnick on the sideline, and Quint's going to tell us now how Iowa plans to defend Indiana's new spread offense. Quint. Craig, that sure will lay on the shoulders of Iowa's marquee linebackers, Abdul Hodge and Chad Greenway. We spoke to them yesterday. Hodge says that the spread is a challenge to him because it drags him out of the box and into coverage in the flat where he'll be matched up one-on-one -on -one with the right wide receiver. Chad Greenway, though, was less strategic about this game. He says Indiana is brimming with confidence. They're believing. They are hungry. We've got to punch them in the mouth early. We've got to dictate the tempo. Never let them taste success. All right, Quint, thanks very much. We'll be checking in with you throughout today's game, and we are ready for the opening kickoff. Indiana will kick off Joe Kleinsmith, Javon Johnson, I should say Albert Young, and Damian Sims back deep to receive the kick. And we are underway in this Big Ten contest. Young's got the ball at the four. And he is laid down at the 16-yard line. And a big hit and a good start. Bradley, I should say, Powers with the tackle there in special teams. And now Iowa comes out. There is Drew Tate. Five touchdown passes in his last two games. He is back on track. The junior from Baytown, Texas. And as you can see, his first meeting against the Indiana Hoosiers. First and ten, Hawkeyes. Out of the eye. Tate's going to pass, looks downfield, and this one sails out of bounds, incomplete. Let's take a look at the Hawkeyes, backs and receivers right now. Clinton Solomon, one of the receivers. Herb Grigsby starts for Ed Hinkle, Scott Chandler. Albert Young and Tom Bush up front. Brian Farron centers the line. Ben Gates and Mike Jones at the left side. Marshall Yonda and Mike Elgin on the right. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Hawkeyes fresh after a road victory at Purdue, looking to carry momentum in a two-game winning streak. But Indiana's defensive line with the stop, and Indiana's defense off to a good start. Let's take a look at that defense right now. Starting on that front line, Victor Adianju, Russ Richardson, Charlie Emerson, and Ben Ishola. The linebackers a good group, Kyle Killian, John Pinozo, and Josh Moore. And in that secondary, Leslie Majors and Tracy Porter on the outside, Troy Grossfield and Will Myers are your safeties. Craig, this is where Drew Tate has grown accustomed to having Ed Hinkle, a third down receiver. He's the guy he's got confidence in. With Hinkle being out, is that gonna cause a little hesitation in Drew Tate? Out of the shotgun pass, incomplete. As he was looking for Grib Gribsby, Grossfield was there on defense, and Iowa opens up three and out. Not a very impressive three plays either. Ball Tate threw out of bounds. That ball right there was off target in the second down run. Netted a negative yard, so a good start for this Indiana defense, and they should get decent field position. And Grossfield is back to receive the punt. Andy Fenstermaker, the junior walk-on, has earned the punting duties over John Gallery over the last couple of games and done a fine job. Grossfield with some room to run at the 45 and crosses midfield just into Iowa territory and great field position a 38 yard punt seven yard return and Indiana will start at the 49 yard line of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Here comes Blake Powers four touchdown passes a week ago against Illinois and he's also dangerous with the feet. He also gets about 17 yards rushing, so his arm has provided the offense for Indiana, but he can get downfield running the football as well. And he faces a boisterous crowd. Third road game of the year for Indiana. They split their first two, losing their Big Ten road contest at Wisconsin. First pass is complete to the outside to James Bailey. And let's take a look at the starters. Bailey out there with Hardy and Thigpen. 
Jakeem Gilmore as well. And the tight end is Matt O'Neill. Chris Taylor is the tailback. Up front, Chris Manjuro anchors the line. Hatcher and Fry on the right side. Isaac Sills, Adam Hines on the left side. Very veteran, experienced group in the front line for Indiana. After a gain of five, second down and five. Out of the shotgun. And that spread offense. Powers throw it, pass complete. Hardy's got it. And a first down for Indiana. James Hardy, the big target at 6'7. Javon Johnson on the coverage. And speaking of that coverage, let's take a look at that Iowa defense. Kenna Webema, Matt Kroll, Mitch King, Brian Madison across that front line. The linebackers may not get any better than Greenway and Hodge. Add Edmund Miles into the mix as well. Take a look at that defensive. Backfield, Adam Shada, Pascal, Merrick, and Johnson. Very thin in their defensive secondary. A couple of injuries are really running Iowa thin back there. Taylor, no room to run. In fact, he may have lost a yard or two. Mitch King with the initial stop. Terry Hepner, the first year coach of Indiana and what success he has had his seventh year overall coaching of course six years at Miami of Ohio has the Hoosiers off to their best start more than 10 years at four and one. Taylor lost two second down at 12. Powers to his right looks throws completes the pass to Hardy. He's got it down at the 30 yard line gain of about four. And there's Iowa's head coach Kirk Ferentz. Seventh season. And they have been nothing but bowl bound over the last four years and three straight January bowls looking for more. Want to share the Big Ten title a year ago. As this team struggled early this season, he came out after that Ohio State game and said, we need to get back to being fundamentally sound, have a great effort, and fight till the end on every play. If they do that, he's got enough talent, things will take care of themselves. Third down and seven. Power straight back has this one deflected. Brian Madison got a hand on it for the Hawkeyes. Tough call here for Terry Hefner. They've got the ball. Down on the 30 yard line, a little out of range for their field goal kicker. Wouldn't be surprised if he keeps Blake Powers on the field and goes for this on fourth down right here. This spread offense, Blake Powers has had open receivers underneath, and they only need seven yards. And it looks like they will go for it, Randy, from the 30, fourth down and seven. This shows the confidence this Indiana team's playing with. And, and you're right in that in-between. You're too far for a field goal. You're too close to punt, and the offense seems to be clicking in the passing game here. They're going to take a timeout right now and talk this over as the 25-second clock was starting to run down. The Hoosiers, 7 of 8 on fourth down conversions on the season. So the Hoosiers do take a timeout. And they will regroup. And you look at this matchup between Indiana and Iowa, both teams in the upper division right now in the Big Ten standings. And the Big Ten has turned out to be quite a surprise this season. A lot of balance in the Big Ten, a lot of teams capable of beating the other teams. I think that's dominant because of the defenses. Both teams, especially here today, very sound, very solid defensively. And that's going to keep you in every game. Each team here also has offensive firepower at the wide receiver position capable of scoring on quick plays. So that's going to keep both teams in this game right to the end, I think. And you see Blake Powers talking things over with head coach Terry Hepner. And Blake Powers has had a tremendous start to this season. Look at the 18 touchdowns, ranks third nationally, only the six interceptions. Boy, and that's just in five games. Indiana's already had their bye week, and he's got five straight games of three touchdown passes or more. And that's, that is really unusual for a guy that's learning a new system in this spread offense. And I think that goes to tell you how good a job Terry Hepner has done coaching Blake Powers in this new offense when your quarterback can pick it up this quickly. He's facing a big test here on the road. Crowd on their feet. The throw. Taylor will be stopped. No game. Edmund Miles, the outside linebacker, played it perfectly. And on downs, the Hawkeyes will take over. Yeah. 
And we will come back and learn about a new tradition at Indiana. Will it extend on the road? We'll find out about the road rock in a moment. Well, Terry Hepner at Indiana thought, why not go for it? Fourth down and seven at the Iowa 30-yard line. It didn't work out, however, and Iowa takes over on down, so that's where they have the football. Much better field position than on their first possession, which was inside the 20 where they were stopped. Drew Tate over center. Rolls, fires. Hits his tight end, Scott Chandler. He stacked up after about a four-yard gain. Grossfield there on the initial stop for the Hoosiers. And Terry Hepner is uh, instilling some new traditions, the first-year coach at Indiana. And one of those new traditions, well, he happened to find a piece of rock, about three tons of limestone left over from the 1960 Memorial Stadium renovation. And this is known as the Rock and defending the Rock. Their home turf has each player touch that Rock as they go out now to the stadium. And we'll have more of that in just a moment. Straight up the middle, first down run for Iowa. And Indiana takes a piece of that Rock on the road, but Quint Kesnick is it here in Iowa City. The Road Rock didn't make the road trip. I talked to Coach Terry Hepner about it. He said he left the Rock back in Bloomington because of their loss on the road a couple weeks ago at Wisconsin. So he is punishing the Road Rock, which is a 25-pound version of the big three-ton limestone. They're actually selling mini rocks at the school store uh, as well. Craig? All right, Quint, must be a lot of limestone left over in Bloomington. But how about the punishment? I'll tell you what, one game suspension for the mascot. That's pretty tough. <laughs> it is pretty tough. Gain of eight after the run, first down Hawkeyes. Pass goes out to Young, and he is dangerous, catching the ball, stays on his feet. He could go, one man to beat, and they'll mark him out of bounds inside the 10 at the seven yard line. Will Myers saved the touchdown for Indiana, but what a run for Albert Young. Well, one of the advantages you get when you throw the ball to your running backs, these guys are used to being ball carriers, and they are good with the ball after the catch. Nice play action. There he comes just right into the flat, and he's running away from the linebackers using his speed. Just good vision and good strong leg pull right there to break through that attempted tackle. And it was a huge play on what should have been maybe a first down, not a huge gain like that. 51 yards is a huge gain for the Hawkeyes. That sets up first down and goal from the seven-yard line of the Hoosiers. Now gets the call again. This time he is stacked up. Adianju on the stop and Myers as well. Time now for the Red Roof Inn Red Zone proficiency save at Red Roof Inns and Red's hot deals as you take a look at where Iowa is. First in the Big Ten, 21 out of 22. Not only are they first in the Big Ten offensively, their defense is also first in the Big Ten. That's a pretty good combination if you like the Hawkeyes. It's tremendous. 14 of those for touchdowns. No gain, second down and goal. Fake the pass, and Young again is stacked up. No gain. Emerson on the stop for Indiana. Craig, this really plays into the Indiana defensive strength, which is their front seven and their ability to play the run. Very tough, very veteran group. Six of their seven starters up front are all seniors. They've been experienced, and they stop the run much better than they stop the pass. Third down and goal for Iowa. Well, this is where Drew Tate and his feet become such a weapon. Straight back, quick pass, complete. Fighting to get in the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa. Matt Malloy comes in and makes the reception and the touchdown for the Hawkeyes. Ed Hinkle again is out, so it's up to somebody else to step up. And this time it was Malloy. Matt Malloy is a big physical receiver at 6'3", over 200 pounds. Not a lot of speed, but when you snap the ball on the seven yard line, you don't need a lot of speed. He's used to playing a physical game, and he just muscled his way into the end zone there. First contact was made outside of the end zone in a pretty good initial hit, but Malloy just too strong. Schlicker gets the extra point for Iowa, and they take the first lead of the game now at seven to nothing. 9.26 to go in the first. Here's Malloy powering his way in for six. 
Rutgers. Matt Malloy, 84, in the middle of that bench down there for Iowa. He scored the touchdown for the Hawkeyes here in the first quarter. Six plays, 70 yards, and 239. The eight-yard touchdown catch as the student section pretty happy here this morning in Iowa. And we get set now for the Iowa Hawkeyes to kick off. So Hoosiers will have to play from behind here on the road. Deep in the end zone. Comes out to close to the 25 yard line. Let's check in now with Mike Gleason. Well, Craig, we take it to the SEC Ole Miss, Alabama. Look at All right, Mike, thanks very much. Good defensive battle early on there. There's Malloy. His first touchdown this season. Indiana. First at 10 at their own 25. Powers over center. The handoff. Taylor. Three, maybe four. Stopped by Brian Madison. We're in Kinnick Stadium for Big Ten football. Indiana and Iowa here today from Iowa City. Randy Wright, Quint Kesnick, and Craig Kishan with you here today. And the home winning streak for the Hawkeyes. Coach Frerens goes all the way back to Iowa State, their last loss back in the 2002 season. Many of these seniors only with one loss in their career at home is Taylor. Powers his way up, shy of the first down, whoever, Abdul Hodge on the stop. Craig, let's go back and look at that touchdown. Take a look at these guys here are all going to come on the blitz, and the soft coverage right there allows the receiver to get underneath him. If you're going to play man-on-man -man with nobody underneath, you can't give that much room and that free of release to a receiver when your back's against your own goal line. Now it's up to the defense, and this crowd is loud for this Big Ten contest. Blake Powers getting an earful from both sides. Rolls to his right, throws, and it is caught out there at the 40-yard line. Great catch by Jakeen Gilmore. He had to leap up and grab that one and bring it down. He did the job. Boy, it's a nice job of keeping focus on that pass. It was a high throw. Gilmore's been out the last couple of games with a hamstring injury and just playing very, very sparingly until today. They thought they'd have him back today. He'd be healthier already. He's paying some dividends. Well, Gilmore and Taylor came into the season as the only two receivers or backs that had caught a pass. So this new young group with Blake Powers leading the way. He's thrown a touchdown to seven different receivers out of his 18. This one to Bailey. Stopped by Johnson. And Bailey, of course, one of the great stories in the Big Ten, coming back from that car accident he had back in the spring. In the hospital for a couple of weeks in a wheelchair, but here he is playing football in the fall. And it's taken him a while because he missed all the spring ball learning this new offense with the new coaching staff. It's taken him a while to catch up to the rest of the receiving core, but he's been able to do that, especially with Gilmore being injured the last couple of weeks. Game of four, second down, six. And this time Iowa's defense takes a timeout. It could be an equipment issue out there for Abdul Hodge as they take a look at his helmet. Let's go down to the sideline now with Quint Kesnick who has more on James Bailey. Craig, you mentioned his car accident. It happened in March, and the injuries that he suffered, he was very lucky. Broken right collarbone, separated left shoulder, three broken ribs, a broken tailbone, and a fractured pelvis. And it was the pelvis, and talking to the uh, Indiana medical staff, that kept him in a wheelchair for two and a half weeks. He spent 12 days in the hospital. It really is amazing uh, that he is back on the field playing football. Yeah, it certainly is, Quint. And uh, thanks for uh, sharing the story there on Bailey. And Tell you what, one of the great stories, not, not only the fact that it's happening in Indiana, but across the country, that he is back and, and uh, with success and contributing to a winning team. Well, and, and it really set him behind this summer, too, in his conditioning and his workout. So he really had a lot to catch up with. But he's a young kid, too. He's only a redshirt freshman. So that kind of toughness that early will pay dividends for him and the Hoosiers down the road. So the equipment issue dealt with. Second down and six 
Powers goes back to work. And up this time to Yamar Washington. Stopped there by Hodge. And it's going to bring up a third down and about three, maybe four for the Hoosiers. Craig, both teams defensively play the run better than they defend the pass. Indiana, though, you would think has a slight advantage on third downs because of their spread offense and the ability to match up well against Iowa's depleted secondary. Third down and four. Out of the shotgun for Powers. Looking downfield, fires in traffic, and that one, this one is caught out there by Gilmore at the 40-yard line. And Gilmore has come up with some big receptions. This one for 13, his second big catch on this drive. Gilmore is the most physical and the most experienced of the Indiana receivers. Not a big hole right there for Powers to throw that ball in there. But did you see the way Gilmore came back to the ball? The way he came back to it at that point enabled him to make that catch as he stepped in front of some would-be defenders. And he saw he lost the ball at the end and was fortunate to land on it to keep the Hoosiers with the football. First down at the 40 of Iowa. Takes the handoff to Washington. Powers rolling out to his right. Looks downfield and throws it out of bounds. Didn't have anybody to throw to. Plays it safe. Pressure applied by Hodge. It's good maturity shown by a young quarterback to not feel you have to make something happen on every play. Here's Hodge. He sees the play action going that way, recovers, comes up, and chases Powers down. But a rare move by a young quarterback, not get greedy, throw the ball out of bounds, come back and play the next play. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Second and ten. Powers has Washington in that backfield. He goes out now, catches the pass, looking for some running room, eludes the first tackler, but only gets a couple for Indiana. It's going to be third down to long. Mike Humpel on the stop for the Hawkeyes. Greg, one thing you get every time you play Iowa, every time you watch Iowa play, they have the best open field tackling technique in the Big Ten, in my opinion. Their linebackers, their defensive backs, they are outstanding one-on-one -on -one tacklers in the open field. Textbook, as they say. Gonna stick to the fundamentals. Third and eight. Hoosiers two for three on third down conversions. Flag comes in. And that does not help Indiana's cause. Todd Gearlings, the referee for today. That's not what Terry Hepner wants to see. But Terry Hepner and Blake Powers realize that they don't need to get it all on this play. If they get eight or nine yards, they've got 13 to go. If they get eight or nine, that's going to put them into a maybe go for it on fourth down. So if it's not open, don't force it. Take your dump off and play the next one. Third and 13. Powers dumps the pass off to Washington and just simply nowhere to go. Humple again on the stop along with Javon Johnson. Oh, and that's good open field tackling out near the sideline. And this time Indiana with the ball on their 37-yard line and a fourth and seven chooses to bring the punting team on. Little too far to go with seven yards. So Tyson Beatty comes in, the junior from Australia. Good call here to punt this ball away with your defense being the strength. Make Iowa go 80, 90 yards to score. Don't shorten the field for him. And this one will be a touchback. Good effort down there to try to keep the ball alive, but it won't work this time. And when we come back, just a moment. Hawkeyes lead the Hoosiers 7 0 here in the first quarter from Iowa City. Here's this week's Suzuki Walk On Way of Life. Today's Walk On, Adam McClurg of Indiana, his hometown of Greenwood, Indiana. Walked on in 2003 and now listed on that two deep here for this season. His brother Eric also on the squad as a strong safety. So Iowa's got the football in the lead at their own 20 yard line. 
Hand off to Young. Trying to break something to the outside. Gets up to the 25-yard line. Let's check in now in the Big Ten studio with Mike Leeson. Craig back down in the SEC. Ole Miss grabs a 7-0 lead. Michigan State leading Ohio State in Columbus. And they have it first and goal inside the five. All right, Mike, thanks very much for that update. Keeping our eye on the Big Ten and some big games across the country. Big gamer coming up for the Hawkeyes. And a first down out there stopped by Troy Grossfield. And you saw some action from Mike in that top 25. Let's take a look at the poll now. Look at all the unbeaten teams, one through six. Boy, the other thing that steps out is look at Alabama at number six, Penn State at number eight. Not even in your top 25 when the season began. And now you're both playing very well, both undefeated. And a couple of key games for them today, as well as that Notre Dame-USC game coming up. A topsy-turvy Big Ten as it's turning out to be. How competitive is that? One for Young. Let's check in again with Mike Leeson. Greg, they're playing for Paul Bunyan's axe again, the longest uh, storied robber in college football. Badgers, Gophers. Badgers score first. Ryan Calhoun is 12th touchdown this year. 7-0 Wisconsin, Greg. <laughs> All right, Mike, thanks very much. How about that season for Brian Calhoun? Well, what a job he is doing. And finally, Wisconsin has got an offensive coordinator, Paul Chris, that knows how to use the backs in the running game. And they've gotten him involved. He knows how to use the backs in the passing game. And they've really got Brian Calhoun involved, both running and throwing the ball. Second down and six. Take the handoff young, and he is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. A great job out there by R Russ Richardson. 46 to go here in the first and Drew Tate engineering this offense and he has come alive the last couple of games. Well, no question he is the trigger man for this team and he needs to play well. 65% is a good percentage to be completing in this offense. The nine touchdowns and the three interceptions. If there's one thing that he still needs to work on, it's to stay away from the terrible play, the terrible throw that can lead to an, an interception or a big positive play for the other team. How about the big throw here and the big catch? Solomon down to the 30-yard line. Stopped there by Aaron Mitchell, but a 28-yard gain. And Hinkle being out, he's the possession receiver. But Clinton Solomon, no doubt, is the big play receiver. He comes into this game averaging 21 yards per reception. And this is a big reason why. He is excellent with running the, with the ball after he catches it. Keeps his eyes up the field, has good vision, sees things open up. And a lot of his big plays aren't necessarily on long throws, but they're long runs. And a career high 166 yards catching the football last week against Purdue. Couple of touchdowns. Young opens it up on his feet inside the 20. And he's in for the score. Touchdown, Iowa. Albert Young from 31 yards out. And the big pass play opened up a big run for Young. And the Hawkeyes are off to the start that they wanted against Indiana. Their second touchdown of the opening quarter. Greg, you don't run the ball as well as Iowa does to the outside without having wide receivers that are physical and good blockers. And they did an excellent job on that play. Schlicker tags on the extra point, and the Hawkeyes now grab a 14-0 advantage. And that lip starts to tighten up a little bit for Terry Hepner over there on the Indiana side. Take a look, Craig, how this opens up for Albert Young. Here's a key block right there as he comes down, and then the lineman here kicks out. And that opens up an alley right there for Young to go through. Good downfield blocking by those wide receivers. And then just the speed of Young and a poor attack angle taken by Indiana. Good sustained blocks by that entire left side of that Iowa offense. What a difference Albert Young has made to this running game. We talked about all the injuries last year, all the players that had to step back there and play. Albert Young, just a sophomore, has really contributed in that run game. It's been a huge difference for this Iowa offense. Really coming into his own after battling knee injuries the last two seasons. His fourth touchdown of the year. Indiana offensively, they have the power to strike quickly and make some big plays, but they want to run the ball from their spread offense. They need to be careful here, down 14 to nothing, that they don't let this game get any more out of hand, and they can continue running the ball as well as throwing it. And 
Bennett fields his punt and goes out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Let's check in again with Mike Gleason. Greg, we head for Columbus and Michigan State Sparty grabbing the upper hand. Yeah, Ohio State turned it over two times in the first quarter plus a big 15 yard penalty. J.U. Colcrick with the score, and now the Buckeyes are down to Michigan State. It's 10 0. All right, Mike, how about that? Take a look at Michigan State, Ohio State, last win in Columbus back in 98. We should have Michigan State coming off their bye week last week. They should be healthy, and boy, nobody in the Big Ten is playing better than Drew Stanton right now. So Bennett chose to take that bounce on the kickoff and went out of bounds with it rather than wait for the penalty. And how about the big run starting from the 15 yard line, a first down run out there. For Chris Taylor, gain of 11. This is what Indiana really wants to do spread the defense and run the ball. And that challenges Iowa and their strength, which is their linebackers. There you see Chad Greenway not really sure where the ball was going. And he really was not going to be very happy with the way he played that play right there. Hence, whenever you see a linebacker go down like that, chances are the ground game is going to pick up some big yards. And despite being down two touchdowns, still have to establish that run. Don't Absolutely, you? especially still in the first quarter. Indiana needs to stay in what their game plan is. And again, the handoff, this time a short gainer. Brian Madison there on the stop for the Hawkeyes on the right side. Indiana offensively, they have the ability to score quickly. They've got some real playmakers at the wide receiver position, especially with Yakeem Gilmore back and healthy today. We haven't seen their go-to guy, though, James Hardy. We haven't seen him get very involved yet, and I would look for Indiana to start getting him more involved. Blake Powers, efficient numbers, 9 of 11, 56 yards. Three of his receivers to the top. Goes to one of them in Baylor. He's got it. It's still going to be third down and about four. Javon Johnson pushes him out of bounds. This kind of defense is going to test the patience of Blake Powers, the Indiana quarterback. They are dropping very deep, and they're dropping quickly, and they're forcing Powers to come off of his initial read down the field and take the dump off underneath. Sometimes the quarterback can get impatient and start to force things down the field, and that's when mistakes can happen. Third down and three. Powers out of the shotgun. There's Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for Iowa. Pass complete. Bailey first down at the 40-yard line. We talked to Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, yesterday for Iowa, and he said, hey, you know, we're not really going to do anything to take away James Harden. You know, he's, he's a guy, and we got injuries, and we're just going to line up. I think they're trying to take away James Hardy because Blake Powers is living with James Bailey, and so far, that seems to be working okay for him. Real talkative guy, Norm Parker, isn't he? <laughs> He keeps it close to the vest. Pretty close to the vest. He wasn't really interested in sharing a lot of their schemes. This time Washington trying to spin but can't spin out of trouble. And he's knocked down there for about a yard or two loss. Hodge there on the initial stop along with Alex Canellis. This very young, inexperienced defensive front for Iowa. So far in this first quarter, they're playing pretty well. The defense playing well, the offense doing their part on the other side, coming up with a couple of big touchdowns in this opening quarter at Iowa off to a fast start over the Hoosiers, leading after one, 14 to nothing. One quarter in the book, Iowa leads Indiana 14 to nothing. Let's take a look at our marathon fast stats after quarter number one, and it's about total yards. Iowa 149, Indiana 86. It was pretty even for the first half of that quarter, but Iowa turned a few would-be short gains into some big plays, and that's why they're lopsided in Iowa's favor. And Iowa had a 51-yard reception and a 31-yard touchdown run. Pass is complete out there to Thigpen. Let's check in with Mike Leeson. Well, Craig, we told you about Michigan State, uh, but Ohio State came right back. Yeah, just a blown coverage here. Troy Smith takes the option. Safety didn't get over, Mike. Easy touchdown for Santonio Holmes. Number three on the air for Santonio Holmes, and now it's a little bit tighter on the shoe. 10-7, Sparty on top by three. All right, Mike and John, thanks very much. Good game there. 
And here in Iowa City, it's 14 to nothing. Indiana comes up, though, with a big first down to Thigpen to keep the drive alive. They're just in Iowa territory. Howard's out of the shotgun. Fires and finds his man Harding is brought down right away out there by Johnson. Let's check in now with Quint Kasnick, who's talking basketball, Quint. That's right, Craig. We got Steve Alford, the head basketball coach here at Iowa. They tipped off last night at 7 o'clock to start their season. Coach, expectations high. You have a senior team. What are the expectations? Well, we hope they just keep getting bigger and better because that means you're doing some good things. And last year we had a good year, and we got a lot of guys back from that team. All but one guy's back. And we got some great leaders in Greg Bruner and Jeff Horner. So hopefully we can take it one more step. Craig, you take this play, and then I'll ask Coach some more questions. All right, first down at 10 from the 36. Nowhere to go for Taylor. Quint. Coach, you return uh, basically all your starters, and your seniors talk about leaving a legacy. What will that legacy be? Well, there's some things that they just want to do. We've had, we've had to handle adversity, and I think our guys have done a tremendous job, whether it's been injuries or otherwise. They've really handled themselves with a lot of class and integrity, and we've been able to win. We're one winning season away of having six in a row, which hadn't happened here in 50 years. So. They've done some special things, but the championship that it's eluded them, that's what they're after. Craig? Second down at 11. Powers out of the shotgun, rolls right, looks, fires, finds his receiver, and Hardy knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Quint? Coach, you talk about being a hungry team. How does that manifest itself? Uh, what, what is the end result about being hungry? Well, I think we've had some very talented kids, and uh, our team has changed just about every January, February, and that's it hadn't been their fault. It's just been something that's happened, and it's been a tough breaks. And now I think they're solid. We got 16 kids on roster. They've experienced a lot. Now they just want to have a special year. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Appreciate Coach it. Steve Alford, who actually had his eyes on James Hardy uh, during that last pass play. As Hardy, keep in mind, plays basketball for the Hoosiers. Yeah, you bet the two sports star with his fourth catch. Alfred, of course, one of the greatest Hoosier basketball players ever. Lobs this one towards the end zone. And this one falls just incomplete. Good idea, just didn't work out. Crow with the pressure. Right, Blake Powers cover. really had a chance to run the ball and pick up the first down. He only needed four yards to go for it. And early in that play, he had plenty of daylight had he chosen to run the ball. That would have been a tough catch for a running back. Sometimes it's hard for that running back to stretch out and catch the ball, but they have bigger shoulder pads. It's hard for them to catch anything above their head. Powers had seven straight completions going before that incompletion. Fourth down and three, the second fourth down of the first half. The Hoosiers are going for failed in their first attempt from the 30-yard line. This one sails way over the head of the 6'7 football freshman and Hardy. Shada there on the coverage for Iowa, and the Hoosiers are done on downs. Well, second time that Iowa's held them on fourth down, and you can sense the momentum is even getting greater in their favor. The Hawkeyes take over a two touchdown lead in Iowa City. Early second quarter, the Hawkeyes take over their first possession of this quarter, but look what they have done in first quarter play here at home. 70 to nothing outscoring their opponents. Why do they have a trail at home in the last 10 games counting today? Unbelievable. 21 straight home victories. It's time to pass and it's dropped. Let's check in now with Mike Leeson. Up of the dome, Craig. Tony Mortensen has his first collegiate touchdown pass. Finding his tight end, Matt Spaeth. That's his second of the year. Nice grab. They're tied at 7-7 in the Metrodome as they battle for the axe. Big upset here so far. BC has minus 11 yards rushing. They've struggled with Wake Forest the last couple of years, Craig. Thanks, Mike. And it looks like the struggle continues. Brian Cupido not in for Minnesota as well. No, he's out. It's good confidence booster for the backup quarterback to have some early success. Second down and 10. Take the dump off. Young. First down as he crosses the 40 yard line. We're in Iowa City after the gain of 13. Indiana and Iowa battling here in Big Ten play at Kinnick Stadium. Randy Wright, Quinn Kesnick, I'm Craig Kishan. Great to have you with us here this afternoon. 
Craig, no question, when Iowa has needed a play on offense, they have turned to their running back, Albert Young, but not just in the running game. They've gotten him involved in the passing game and has tur have turned that into some big plays. Short gainer to the 45, and you saw what the Hawkeyes were able to do last year with their 4 and 2 record, 4 and 2 now. And they're trying to move to 5 and 2. Here's a look at the earlier scoring. Malloy muscles his way in, and then Young goes in from 31 yards out. And it's 14 0 Iowa. Just what Chad Greenway told us Iowa needed to do come out fast. Come out strong, put some points on the board, take what momentum Indiana may have with their four and one start this season, take that away from them, make them fight from behind. Damian Sims in the backfield now. Fake to him. Tate looks downfield for his tight end. And this one bobbled, nearly caught, but dropped by Scott Chandler. Troy Grossfield there on coverage, the free safety for Indiana. Oh, good play by Grossfield, a former kicker, came here as a kicker a couple years ago and has made himself a position as a safety. Nice job of seeing the receiver release and fighting over there. And this ball really is caught until Grossfield pulls Chandler's arms down and knocks the ball out. That was a ball that you see caught as many times as you see it dropped. Grossfield made a nice play. Chandler at 6-7, Grossfield at 5-11. He made a nice play indeed. And this one dropped by another receiver. Malloy can't handle it. Got the touchdown earlier, but can't handle that pass, so it brings up fourth down at seven. Well, you, you can't argue with Drew Tate putting the ball on the money, trying to make some things happen. And here you see the corner blitz coming right off there. Just a side adjustment as the defensive end, Adianji tries to get out there. That was a ball that just should have been caught. Third drop, and you can't think more about Ed Hinkle not being in the lineup. The third down possession receiver for Iowa. This will calls for the fair catch at the 21 yard line. That's the one missing link so far here in the first half for Iowa. Today's game is brought to you by the best seats for every event. No tickets required. It only happens in one place, only in Vegas. You see the renovation going on here at Kinnick Stadium. Part of it's complete. And the other part will be the uh, suites and press box area for next year. First down at 10 for Indiana, taking over at their own 21. This time they go to the ground game. Miles on the stop of Taylor. Craig, one thing about this Indiana offensive line, they're a blue collar, hardworking, very experienced, but not a real athletic line. One of their strengths is because of their experience, they should be able to adjust to things that Indi that Iowa's throwing at them as the game goes on, adjust to stunts, and be more successful as the game goes on. They've got their work cut out for them right now because Iowa's controlling the line of scrimmage. Taylor, seven rushes, only 17 yards. Another call to the ground. They're fighting for an extra yard or two is Taylor again, but not a whole lot doing there with Humple on the stop. Well, be sure to join us next Saturday at noon Eastern as the 15th-ranked Buckeyes from Ohio State travel to Indiana to take on these Hoosiers down in Bloomington. Check local listings for the game in your area. Every week, every game seems to be growing bigger and bigger in Big Ten play. And, and very competitive. Michigan State ahead of Ohio State at this point, 10 to 7. Ohio State, of course, coming off that loss last week at Penn State. And a timeout taken by Powers at Indiana. They're second here in the first half. Good timeout. Key third down situation right now. You need to put something together. If you're not sure what's going on, take the timeout. And here's a look at the Big Ten standings. Not what anybody predicted, but this is how it's turning out. Who would have thought that Michigan and Purdue from the beginning of the season would be on the bottom half? Well, Penn State, the only undefeated team in the Big Ten, and that may be the biggest shocker. Absolutely. Here's an advanced look at the upcoming schedules brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts, and it's for Indiana, as we mentioned, back home against Ohio State, and then they've got the schedule that goes home away, home, and then we've got the, uh, the schedule that goes along for Iowa as well, and it, it's almost hard to predict at this point who's going to match up 
at this where point, in the slots in the Big Ten stand. At this point, with the Big Ten being as balanced as it is, the end of the season is going to come down to who stays the healthiest. You know, which quarterback plays better and who stays the healthiest in order to maintain a shot at the Big Ten title. Third and four. Powers fires behind his intended receiver, James Hardy. He had time to throw it, but had a hard time finding the open receiver, and that one did not work out. No, he, he didn't, and he did have time to throw. Again, a little alley should had he chosen to run, but just a ball that's off the mark again. And this is the third or fourth time that Powers, generally a very accurate passer, well over 56% completion, has had open receivers and has not made a good throw. Is part of that frustration, the, the short passing that he's being allowed to at this point, not downfield? Well, I think Iowa plays good tight coverage, and I think he's just off at this point in his passing game right now, and he needs to get back into a rhythm. Good boot by Beatty, the return by Johnson up near the 40 yard line. 45 yard punt, 13 yard return. When we come back, we're talking more about the Big Ten. Midterm marks by Randy Wright, the instructor coming up. Nearly vibrant here in Iowa City as the Hawkeyes on a beautiful fall day for football. Lead Indiana 14 to nothing. And it's going to be Iowa football from their own 41 yard line. Hoosiers road test. They are down by two touchdowns. Good field position for Drew Tate. He's got Albert Young in the backfield. He gets the football. Eludes one tackler. Stopped after a yard gain. And we've been talking about the standings in the Big Ten. You're the professor now. It's midterm time. Who's your most improved player? Let's start there. I think. It was a close race. There are a lot of good candidates. I took Drew Stanton at Michigan State. And sometimes you think most improved means, well, they didn't play well last year. Now they're playing well this year. I think Drew Stanton played well last year. I think he's playing just outstanding this year. He's been great. I think you could have looked at John Stocko, the quarterback for Wisconsin, that's doing well. I think you look at Michael Robinson, who settled in at one position and is playing well. But I, I don't think you can overlook what Drew Stanton has done to this point for Michigan State. There's no question he makes that uh, wheel turn. Victor Adianju, the stop there of Albert Young. And here's your guy, Drew Stanton, and these stats don't lie. Well, and he has played a tough schedule. They played Notre Dame, they played Michigan, a tough game today at Ohio State, but look at the success that he has had. Michigan State's strength is certainly on their offense, whereas defensively, they're fairly average, and they are going to need this offense led by Stanton in order to continue to win. It's amazing that he came in and played special teams in John L. Smith's first year. He just wanted to be on the field. Tate in trouble. Not sure if he lost that football or not. Looks like Iowa has it. Two good defensive stands in a row by this Indiana defense. They came with the corner blitz again, and it was good coverage downfield. One on one, no safety help. And Drew Tate couldn't find an open receiver down there. So one of the better coverage sacks that you'll see. Tate has really not been in trouble today until then. Andy Fenstermaker. Beautiful punt. Grossfield calls for the fair catch and does so at the 16 yard line. 8 14 to go here in the second quarter. Let's check in with Mike Gleason. It's unbelievable. Let's take a look at the ACC top 25 teams. There they are Virginia Tech, Florida State, Miami, and Boston College. Three of them in the top Man. seven. Holy cow. Now that's going to be some kind of conference as those teams get used to playing each other. And completes his pass. Greg, I think this is a very important drive for Blake Powers in this Indiana offense. He has been a little inaccurate in this first half. Hasn't made some of the big throws that you would count on him to make. They've got eight minutes to go. They need to put a long drive together, take some time off for the clock, and they need to get some points out of this drive here. They can't go in anywhere near at halftime, sputtering the way they have been so far. Powers is spread 
His pass is out now to seven different receivers. Goes to Bailey again. Has that one stripped away and fortunate that it goes out of bounds. Javon Johnson there. Let's take a look at the uh, first half possessions for Indiana. You know, they started out pretty well with good field position and they went for it on fourth down around the 30 yard line and then they really haven't got into any kind of a rhythm they did have the 11 play drive but again Iowa seems to come up with a big play defensively which shuts them down third down and short Powers rolls throws as Hardy first down and he's brought down at the 32 yard line so a big third down conversion to keep things going for the Hoosiers who have not scored yet in this game one of the better throws by Powers going to his key man James Hardy this ball was thrown with some authority behind it he zipped it in there you throw it more accurately when you throw it with a purpose the net ball hit Hardy right in the chest right in an easy spot for him to catch that's the kind of throw that Terry Hepner's used to see Blake Powers make. And a key catch. First and 10 from the 31. Powers looks downfield. And nowhere going to Jakeem Gilmore. We'd like to take a moment to thank our Big Ten corporate partners, Cooper Tires. Proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires don't give up a thing. And U.S. Bank, where five-star service is guaranteed. Big Ten football, Iowa City, a beautiful afternoon. You see where Indiana really trying to spread out that Iowa defense. This is where some holes can open up underneath if the quarterback chooses to run. Powers runs this time. Ball comes loose. And it looks like the Hoosiers recover. So a good gain on the run, lost on the fumble. But the Hoosiers maintain the football and will have a third down and long. Not a good play at the end as Powers fumbled the ball, but Terry Hepner is going to be glad to see his quarterback tuck this one under and run with it. Sometimes when you're off and out of sync as a passer, you got to get involved in the running game. You take a few hits, and that gets you into the game a little bit more. What a nice job, though, by that Iowa defense coming up, forcing that fumble. And Ben Miles, the big hitter, that outside linebacker, Reviewing the play here to see if Powers' knee was down on the ground before the ball came out. Tom Quinn is our Big Ten technical advisor. As Todd Gearlings comes over to put on the headset, the field referee, Tom Quinn up in the press box, will take a look at that play. Once again, you need indisputable video evidence. No question Indiana is going to retain possession of the ball as they recover the fumble, but where is it going to be? See if his knee is down right there before the ball came out. Well, that's a close one. From that angle, tough to say. To say. This may be a better angle. There's, the, there's it down right there. I think this ball is going to be remarked up where Powers got hurt. I think there's enough indisputable video evidence right there that this is going to go to Indiana keep it in Indiana but much further down the field that is one of those bang bang plays I'm glad I'm not upstairs trying to review well often you don't always see where the, the knee goes down because you're looking as an official where to spot the ball where's the ball down so you don't often see the knee go down especially in a bang bang play like that back to my last point Craig I think this will help Blake Powers settle down a little bit get him involved in the running game let him take a few hits get some of those cobwebs out of there he's been a little inaccurate throwing it let's see if he can get a little ac more accurate now once again there's the left knee in fact actually both knees look down right there before the ball comes out this should be Indiana ball further down the field You see all the Indiana offensive linemen there going at the ball. You always wonder when your offensive linemen are standing around watching the play happen. They can see what happens. 37 instant replay games, 38 stoppages, and 13 have been overturned. Just a Could this be 14? A little over a third. That's uh, yeah, a fair amount. That's 13 calls that 
been reversed. That's that's a pretty fair amount. Well, I like it because the the time frame to review is fairly tight. They can make a decision within a reasonable amount of time. Here's the call. After review, there is indisputable video evidence that the runner was down by contact. Indiana's ball at the 36-yard line. Well, that's the other thing, and you mentioned it video-wise. They can mark where the ball should be. Yeah, no question here. In fact, I'm not sure both knees aren't actually down on the ground before Powers got here. So it's a good call by the officials. And this really makes it a little more attractive third down call for Indiana as they now have third and five instead of third and a bunch. That's right. That will fire up the crowd a little bit, of course. They'll argue that that was a fumble. But a good call by how the Big Ten plays the rules of the replay. Indiana offensively here spreading the field out again. Been some open holes for Powers the last couple of third downs to run the ball, or he's tried to get it to his go-to guy, Hardy, on the outside. Powers out of the shotgun. Looks to his right, fires, and it looks like this one is complete at midfield. And what a job out there by Hardy. Gain of 14. You have any question whether this guy's a football player playing basketball or a basketball player playing football? He's a receiver. It. He's a football player. He's on the outside there, comes across, and he settles down. The ball's thrown to the inside, and that's a good throw by Powers because he knows where the coverage is coming from. Always leads your receiver away from the coverage, and the receiver can't tell where it's coming from with his back to it. Good throw, outstanding catch. Good game by Hardy so far. Six catchers came in by far leading the team with 34. Powers again on the run, takes a hit. Down at the 39, let's check in with Mike Leeson. Well, he did take a... All right, Mike, thanks very much. How about that? Spartans up. And Northwestern showing the big plays again. Coming off that victory over Wisconsin. Big time shootout last week. First and 10. And this time, Powers calls a final timeout of the first half. 5.21 to go here in the second quarter. Let's take a look at the Big Ten standings, I should say preseason predictions. This was preseason to current of what it is now, which is which is an amazing turnaround. Well, and, and you can see some of these teams that were thought to be very good and have been a little bit of a disappointment. Three of those four unranked. Michigan has been ranked forever. Maybe you know, it seems like forever they have been. Obviously out of the top 25 right now in a tough game again today at Penn State. They could go to three and four. It's, at, it's in Ann Arbor, but against Penn State. And in Ohio State, Tough one now down to Michigan State at home. So if you're going to have some of these teams that are unranked, they're losing to Big Ten teams, and that's why you see some of the ones that weren't ranked in the preseason, your Penn State, your Wisconsin, some of those teams up there. With more of the preseason rankings, let's go down to Quinn. Craig, when we talked about Coach Ferentz about Iowa season, when he talked about parity, he says, hey, we're not good enough to look around the league. We've got to focus on ourselves. Their goal is to finish October on a high note. He said, since the Ohio State loss, they focused on being fundamentally sound, playing with great emotion, and really just focusing on their effort uh, play at a time. Craig? All right, Quinn, thank you. First down and 10 for the Hoosiers, just inside the 40-yard line of Iowa. Nowhere to run there. Humple and Madison on the stop for the Hawkeyes. Indiana using their last timeout on that last play, but they've got over five minutes to go, and they're in good field position here. So the way they're running their offense, throwing the short passes to the outside, they should have plenty of time. Hopefully that won't come back to haunt them. Loss of two, second and 12. out of the shotgun throws this one knocked down he was looking for Hardy out there shade on the coverage let's go to Mike Leeson Craig Drew much that could end up being a shootout in Columbus boy it gets that Ohio State defense that would surprise me that Michigan State's having that kind of success but they're rested they were off last week and when you have a veteran quarterback running a spread offense like Northwestern and Ohio and Michigan State they have a lot of success 
Third down and 12, 10th play of the drive, going for it all, Hardy, downfield. He's got the football at the one yard line. How about that, using all six foot seven inches of his body? What a nice adjustment to the ball. Hardy had his defender beat by four or five yards. The ball was thrown a little bit more to the inside. And getting it over there, Hardy had to go back in and make an outstanding catch. And what a good physical play that was. Today's All-State Good Hands play, this one right here. How about this catch by Hardy? Boy, he catches that ball actually about waist high because he jumps up and has to get in front of the defender in an outstanding play. Whistle stops play. Looks like the Hawkeyes take a timeout as Indiana uses that 40 yard play to Hardy to set up first down and goal at the one. And Chad Greenway and company need to talk things over with Norm Parker. James Hardy, look at the afternoon. He has had seven receptions, 99 yards, all in the first half. Take a look at the room he has between himself and Javon Johnson. The ball's thrown back to the inside, but what a nice effort. Hardy just goes up and gets that ball. And he uses his body, which, as you said, 6'7", 215 pounds. He uses that as leverage, and it's a strong position he can put himself into. I'm surprised how strong his hands are, though. You have seen him catch the ball that time in his body, other times with just his hands. And it's a surprise for a kid that's as young as he is to have hands as strong as they are. You know, and we talked to him before the game on the field, and. You would ask him the question about the scholarship, football or basketball. He says, it's obviously, it's football, but he said, I want to play basketball. He's got the two sports in his hand. He came here because they would allow him to do both, and he told us football has always been his first love. First down and goal. Power straight ahead. Touchdown, Hoosiers. And that caps an impressive drive for Indiana. And they get on the board trying to trim their 14-point deficit in half. Talked about how they needed to be productive on that drive. Blake Powers settled down, threw some nice passes, and some players around him, most notably James Hardy, started making some plays. Blake Powers' first career rushing touchdown on first down and goal just took the snap and followed his center, Chris Mangiro, straight into the end zone. Joe Kleinsmith comes in to try to tack on the extra point. An impressive 11 play drive for the Hoosiers. And the extra point is good. And that 14 point lead by Iowa is gone. Thanks in part to this big guy, the freshman James Hardy, making the catch at the one yard line, setting up the touchdown. Iowa City 14 to 7 Iowa's lead now over Indiana as the Hoosiers score their first touchdown of the game an impressive drive 11 plays 84 yards covering just over four minutes Powers his first career touchdown rush he was five of seven passing including two big third down conversions the second a 40 yarder to James Hardy that set up first down and goal but an impressive quarter altogether for the Hoosiers. They put some things together and they finished that one in the end zone. Now the pressure immediately falls to the Indiana defense. They have to keep Iowa out of the end zone. Hopefully for Indiana off of the scoreboard these final four minutes and 13 seconds to take this momentum they've got back into the halftime locker room. Line Smith goes with the short kickoff. It's field. It's going to be good field position for Iowa over the 40-yard line. Let's check in with Mike Leeson to see what's coming up at halftime. Well, Craig, coming up at halftime, the Spartans were hoping to flex those offensive muscles in the horseshoe. Right now, they lead it by 10. Alabama's finding out a trip to Ole Miss could be one of those danger games. They had last week off. Maybe it was too much time. And we could have a major, major upset brewing in the ACC. Craig? All right, Mike, looking forward to that. And uh, we still have some time left in our clock here, however. Four minutes plus for the Hawkeyes. Tate goes to the air right away and finds his tight end. That's Scott Chandler in a big gain all the way down to the 35-yard line. Check that, the 38-yard line for Iowa. Gain of 22. So they come out firing. 
Iowa thought they could run play action effectively against Indiana. Their safeties like to come up and force the run. That time, Troy Grossfield from his safety position comes up a little bit too tight, and Chandler gets behind him, and a perfect throw by Tate. Tate fakes the handoff under pressure. And wisely throws this one out of bounds. Ben Ishola trying to keep up footwork with him. That was close to not getting across the line of scrimmage. We are in Iowa City for Big Ten football between the Hoosiers and the Hawkeyes from Kinnick Stadium. Randy Wright, Quint Kesnick, and Craig Kishon here this afternoon. Greg, I mentioned that point because if a quarterback throws the ball away, if he's outside the pocket, the ball's got to get at least to the line of scrimmage, and that was very close whether that one did. Hoosiers off to their best start since the 94 team. That's their record of 4-1. The last team to have a winning record at Indiana as well. So they're trying to end 10 years plus of futility. Will Myers the stop for the Hoosiers. And so far in this second quarter, look at the domination by Indiana as they finally get their first score. And they've been able to move the ball offensively as you see there, and that's also kept the Iowa offense on the sideline. So third down and 12. And that Hoosier defense rise to the occasion one more time. Tate looks downfield, throws this one incomplete. And fourth down. Iowa and plenty of time still left on the clock here in the first half. Talked about the maturity and the senior leadership on this Indiana defense. That was a good example of it. They give up a first down on first down that Iowa ran, the big play to Chandler. Then they tighten up with their up from their own 40 yard line to come up with three good defensive plays. And that's a, a sign of a good mature defensive team and their leader stepping up. Instant maker the boot. Looks like it may have gone off the side of his foot. Rosefield slips, but is able to make the catch at the 17-yard line. The market at the 18 for Indiana. That's where they will take over. They scored on their last possession, their first score of the game. But let's take a look at the scoring summary. Well, it starts with Iowa twice here. The short pass for the first touchdown. And then Albert Young, the big run, which put Iowa comfortably ahead, 14 to nothing. Indiana, though, finally gets things going here in the second quarter as Powers, after a long completion to his top receiver, Hardy, down to the one-yard line, sneaks it in for Indiana's touchdown. 14 to 7 our score. We've got a little momentum now. You've got a quarterback with a little more confidence and over three minutes to go. We'll see what Indiana wants to do with this. Powers flushed out of there. Trying to find somebody and lofts this one out of bounds. Wisely so. His big play guy, and we knew this coming in, was James Hardy. Could Iowa stop him? So far, they have not been able to. Well, Hardy has been. Iowa's or Indiana's leading receiver and this is just one of the many receptions he's had here today an outstanding athletic play to go up and get that ball and when you're struggling offensively somebody needs to step up and ask the question if it's not me who's it going to be Hardy made it that time Powers 19 out of 27 for 172 yards here in the first half to pass again pass number 28 is complete He's got his guy Hardy out there, and it looks like he has picked up another first down. I don't think Indiana is going to take anything that's real risky. I think they're going to throw the ball to the outside where they can get out of bounds. Or with a first down, like you see Hardy pick up here, the clock will stop. If they get a little better field position, I think you'll see Powers try and get the ball a little further down the field. But they want to make sure they don't turn it over or leave Iowa with too much time left on the clock. First and 10 from their own 29, an 11-yard gain on the pass play to Hardy. Out of the shotgun again, Powers. This time he's got some room to run. Looking to make the fake. But quickly brought down as he crosses the 30-yard line. Mike Humple on the stop. Craig, it was a good fake. I'm not so sure he wasn't thinking, I got to get out of bounds. And as he made that move to try and run towards the sideline, 
I'm not sure if he's athletically enough, if he's glided enough to make that move, or if he's thinking, get the ball out of bounds. Now they've got a second down, letting this clock run down, and that's okay. They know in, in college ball, with the clock stopping after a first down, they got enough time, and right now, Blake Powers is thinking three points, not seven points. Got four there, second down and six. This time, dumps this one off to Washington. He fights for extra yards, will be stopped shy of the first down, however, by Adam Shada. What a mistake by Washington not getting out of bounds. He's a fifth year senior, their number two receiver with 12 receptions in this game. He's got to get that ball out of bounds. Clock rolls, 190 seconds to go, first half. Third down and one. Indiana six of ten on third downs in this game already. Powers throws complete. Hardy first down and he gets out of bounds at the 45 yard line. And Iowa willing to concede the first down, not wanting Indiana to get the big play behind them, knowing they've got no timeouts. Tough to cover Hardy short and deep. So Javon Johnson choosing to give up the short stuff, make the sure tackle, and don't give up the big play. Hardy becoming Blake Powers go to guy favorite receiver great chemistry building between these two and their first year playing football together on the shotgun again in trouble Powers throws downfield and throws it away well, he looks like he's in control, doesn't he? You know what? Ever since he started running and scrambling with the ball and he took a couple of those hits, he has felt like he is in control. He's got a great presence of mind on the field. He's keeping his poise. He knows where he's at. He knows what he wants. And he is really making some smart decisions and following through with some good throws. What is it about you quarterbacks? You need to be hit a couple of times or what? We've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not underestimate the job this offensive line is doing. Powers has had good protection to be able to throw the ball. They've done an outstanding job. Ask anybody, it all starts there for this IU team. And second down, this one may have been hit as he was releasing it. Ball looked like it fluttered out of there. Incomplete third down and 10 with a minute to go. Not a bad result for the Hoosiers as that stopped the clock. And had that ball been completed, it wouldn't have been for much of a gain, if anything. This is where Indiana has come up and flooded one side of the field with three receivers and sprinted Powers out to that side to give him a little more time. Iowa has seen that formation many times, and you'll see they come up with something to stop it. As the three receivers go to the top of the screen. Almost seems like a game worth of third downs for Indiana. They're 12. The dump off. And not a whole lot of room for Taylor to go. Got the ball back up near the 48 49 yard line. He goes out of bounds, but punting situation for the Hoosiers. You know, good safe play to run the screen, try and catch Iowa in a blitz, and then the screen can become a big play. If not, it's a good safe throw. You don't get the turnover, and now you punt the ball down and make Iowa go the length of the field with less than a minute left on the clock. So Javon Johnson stands at his 10 yard line as he gets set to take Tyson Beatty's punt. Heavy rush, got a piece of it. Iowa's going to come out of there with decent field position with over 40 seconds to go here in the first half. They'll mark it down at the 33 yard line. Let's see who got a hand on it. Take a look. Pressure comes from right up the middle. If we can see right there, a couple of guys stretching out. Andy Brodell. Looks like he got a piece of it. Downfield take. Solomon got a little turned around. And he was open, and Drew Tate knew he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. The free safety got caught up at the line of scrimmage, and Iowa may not get an opportunity with this 37 seconds to go like they had right there. That was a poor coverage, blown coverage, and not a great pass. 
The last two series they've come out firing downfield. And, and Indiana is not backing off. They're keeping those safeties up at the line, and they've been burned a couple of times. Tate lost one up solid again, and a flag comes in. Tracy Porter on the coverage. Looks like he'll be flagged for interference. It's been a fairly penalty free game. And it's just that way for the Iowa Hawkeyes game in and game out. They only have 17 penalties themselves all season. Pass interference, number nine, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Boy, Indiana changed their defense up a little bit as now you see the safeties are back here and this is a tough throw for a quarterback to get the ball in there and it, boy I don't see any interference there at all not a great angle but I don't see any interference on that call right there. Sullivan makes the catch in Iowa trying to get into field goal range 29 seconds as he goes out of bounds. Well, that's a tough call to make on a defensive back. Interference in, in that position where the ball was in the air, and I didn't see that on Tracy Porter at all. Well, these days, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room for those guys in the secondary. No, they got to be near perfect. Outfield. And a big hit after the incompletion as he was looking for Chandler. Chandler got one in the middle of his back, and he is very slow to get up. You throw the ball high over the middle, you expose your receiver. Grossfield came in there after the ball had gone over his head and laid the hit on Chandler. I think you're right, Craig. I think it got him right in the, in the middle of the back. Take a look, see if we can see it again. Chandler there, the inside receiver going deep here. Watch the ball go over his head, and then there's the hit right to the middle of the back. And that's borderline. That ball wasn't thrown over his head well before Grossfield got there. He, now that one, in my opinion, that play deserved a flag much more so than the other one. Now, you know, you get to this point too, and and they're doing it in the NFL, they're doing it now in college football, boy, leading with that helmet that way. And, and you, know, you bring up the point, it almost becomes a weapon out there. And, and that's what they're trying to discourage. And that's why you see the flag thrown when you lead with the helmet, is it's not a weapon. It's there for protection, not there to use it as an aggressive offensive tool. Here's Troy Grossfield. As you mentioned earlier, started as a kicker, but came on now to be in that secondary, which almost never happens. And he has played outstanding football as a, as a free safety. He has been a huge, pleasant surprise. Iowa, with one timeout remaining, chooses not to use it right now as the clock stops with the first down, but they can throw the ball to the middle of the field because they have that timeout remaining. Straight ahead on the first down carry for Majerus. Sets it up straight downfield. Nobody there but Porter. Not sure what was going on there, Randy. Ten seconds to go. You know, I don't think Drew Tate was sure what was going on there either. As you saw him a little upset trying to communicate to one of his receivers, somebody ran the wrong route, and Tate wisely threw the ball away rather than try and make something out of nothing. Well, the ball on the 40 yard line with 10 seconds to go and the timeout they get another 8 10 12 yards they should be in field goal range Slicker, the kicker has a long of 52 well, they need to be thinking three points here try and pick up eight or ten yards Scott Chandler back in at tight end for Iowa after taking the hit Tate downfield Chandler did he make the catch he did well, they're, they're, nope. they're ruling it incomplete the umpire with the best view of it immediately ruled it incomplete. Well, initially it looked like he had it, didn't it? It sure did. Let's take another look. Tough to tell there. This is going to be the best view. Boy, boy, that's tough to tell. We have to take a look at that, and uh, gonna, I think we are. We're going to review it here. 
And, and this is a big call, obviously, for Iowa because there's no question they are in field goal range if this is overturned and ruled a catch. The angles and the replays that we had right there, I don't think there's indisputable video evidence from the angles that we just saw in live action. To me, it looked like he caught the ball. It looked like he had his hands on that football protecting it from the turf. I think there's no question the hands are underneath it. When he rolls over, does the ball hit the ground? And that's something that the referee must have, or the official, the umpire that called it, must have said happened. His hands are clearly underneath it. It's hard to tell from that angle whether that ball hit the ground or not. And that's why I don't think they're going to be able to overturn it because you can't tell why the umpire ruled it incomplete. Well, that's ex that's exactly why they're looking at this and, and a great point on your part. It you was, can't just look at the fact that where the hands and the contact is. He clearly had his hands underneath the ball when it initially came into his body. Most times the ball hits the ground when you roll over and I couldn't see whether it happened or not and I would think the replay official is going to have the same question. There's Kyle Schlicker on the sideline, Iowa's uh, kicker. He's wondering if he's going to get a chance or not. Here's a look at the uh, Big Ten Conference instant replay ruling. And, and I love the way the Big Ten Conference uses the instant replay. Much better than the way the NFL does with oh, coaches' boy. challenges and all that crap that goes on. It's indisputable video evidence. And I didn't see it on that replay that we saw. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it, it's tempting to say he did catch the pass. He clearly it's got tempted. his hands underneath yep. it, I agree. Here's the call. After review, there's indisputable video evidence that we have a catch. First down, Iowa at the 17-yard line. The flag will start. I'm ready. Okay, so now Iowa needs their timeout. I don't think you could make that call not knowing why the umpire ruled it incomplete because I think there's a chance the umpire ruled it incomplete because of what he saw when he rolled over. And that's why I don't think that should have been overturned. Take a look once more. He clearly has his hands underneath it there, but so often that ball comes out there, and I didn't see the indisputable video evidence to show different. Well, it didn't look as he rolled over from those replays like the ball had come out either, so it seems like they initially are looking at the, is there contact with the football when that ball is first coming in. And clearly that's what our yep. video replay official rules. 35-yard field goal to end the first half is there for Iowa and a big turn of events to close out the first half for the Hawkeyes. The replay system working for Iowa as they grab the lead 17-7 at the break over Indiana here in Iowa City. Let's send it back to the ESPN Plus Game Day College Studio and Mike Gleason. We welcome you back to Iowa City. We're about to start the third quarter and the Hawkeyes lead it 17-7 here as we conclude halftime. And it was an interesting way to end the first half as our second replay was overturned of the half and the second one really benefiting the Iowa Hawkeyes setting up a field goal to give them the 10 point lead at the break. Indiana had the momentum with their touchdown. Iowa came back. They got the big break and then made the field goal. So we'll see if Indiana can get that momentum right back. Schlicker to kick. And we are underway in the second half. And this one's going to go through the end zone. And so Indiana will start out first and 10 at their 20 yard line. We talked about the quarterbacks off the top and they played a big role, especially Blake Powers for Indiana. And he really got into a rhythm. Both quarterbacks doing a nice job of taking what the defense gives you. For Indiana, Powers has had the underneath things, had to have some patience and had to work on his accuracy. Then he gets the ball into the end zone. For Iowa, Iowa and Drew Tate, they've been given the opportunity to get some bigger plays down the field. Here's the touchdown after some big pass plays to Malloy. And then, of course, uh, they've been able to take advantage of some of the insecurities 
in the openings that Iowa that the Indiana has given them. Taylor stopped behind the line of scrimmage, tripped up for about a two, three yard loss. And for Powers, you see there 23 completions in the first half, a career high for him already, and it does it in the first half here in Iowa City. But Tate, see, 9 of 19. Tate, Tate only nine completions, but 171 yards. And once again, they, Indiana's been susceptible to the big play, and when it's the opportunity's been presented to Iowa, they've been able to take advantage of it. Pass is complete out there to Thigpen. No gain again. Hoosiers not going forward the right way here to start out the second half. Boy, those sure tacklers in that Iowa secondary. One on one open field. You get a receiver and a defensive back. More times than not, the receiver ought to break that tackle or make the defender miss. And you just don't see it happen with this Iowa secondary. Terry Hepner's team stuck on third down and 13. A very productive second quarter. A lot of time. Powers. They want to think about running. He's threw it way over the line of scrimmage. And so flags come in there. They have lost his train of thought where he was on the field because he threw that about five or six yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that wasn't even close. And it was good coverage downfield by Iowa. Not much of a pass rush as Powers had all day, but certainly lost respect to where he was in the field. On the offense, an eligible man downfield. Also an illegal pass thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. It's hard to blame the an eligible man downfield when your quarterback's five yards down the field. He thinks it's going to be a run, so of course he's going to go down and try and help out and block. But not the kind of start Terry Hepner wanted or needed for his Hoosiers here. Come back, go backwards on their first three plays, and then go three and out. Beating into punt. So the forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage does draw the penalty in the loss of that, which I, I wonder about earlier. That's the one that I was accepted because of both those reasons. Now, Beanie averaging pretty good, 42.1 yards per kick. He's going to need his best kick here. Iowa's going to have outstanding field position. Doesn't appear to be much of a wind down on the field at this point. They were calling for some gusty winds as the uh, day progressed here in the Iowa City area. So Beatty waits on the spot of the ball. Some wind blowing up top. Beatty two punts in the first half. from Australia and brought a lot of personality from down under to this football team and he gets off a beauty. All marked all the way back to the 38. Sims breaks free. Finally tripped up near the 30 yard line of Indiana by Josiah Sears. 40 70 yard punt 30 yard return. He did his part but a nice return. Javon Johnson on the return. Take a look here at your stats. Neither team having a lot of success on the ground. The big difference in the passing yards, Iowa's passing yards have come in big chunks. Indiana's had to have the patience and pick them up in small pieces. Hawkeyes, an outstanding field position, open up the second half. Again, they scored the field goal with uh, time expiring to go into halftime to extend their lead to 10 points. That after they had a 14-0 lead and Indiana had come back late in the second quarter. And a run by Young. This week's passing combinations brought to you by Cargill. We collaborate, create, and succeed with our customers. And take a look at Iowa's passing combinations. Tate to Solomon against Purdue last week, 78 yards. Tate to Solomon against Northern Iowa, 71 yards. And Tate to Hinkle against Purdue last week, 43. And Hinkle broke his arm on that, his longest of his career. 
on this year to roughness. Number 61, offense. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. You know, it's bad enough that you, you come over and you talk to your head coach after getting a personal foul like that, but when you're, the head coach is your dad and you have the personal foul, that's twice as bad as Brian Ferentz guilty of the infraction there. Well, Iowa averaging less than three penalties a game. That's their first penalty of this contest. You look at, the, they lead the nation in fewest penalties per game, fewest penalty yards. They are leading the Big Ten in red zone offense and red zone defense. Only six fumbles this year. Just amazing the discipline that Kirk Ferentz has with his Iowa football team. Tate spins away. Looks downfield, wide open, Solomon, touchdown. Spin away by Tate may have freed up his receiver. Craig, we talked about Drew Tate and his ability to get big yards on small numbers of plays. Another example where he scrambles around. He keeps his eyes down the field better than any quarterback in the Big Ten with buying time, and that's how his big plays come, and that was a great example of it right there. 42-yard pass play, and Iowa now out in front, 24-7, their biggest lead of the game. Tate's fourth pass of 20-plus yards, couple of touchdowns in this game already, so it's been big play for Tate. Look at the last move right there, and he just unloads. Clinton Solomon on the sideline, and he is getting a rest after a big touchdown reception. Two plays, 32 yards, but the 42-yard touchdown catch, that's because of the personal foul penalty against Iowa. Pushed it back, but it turned out to make no difference for Drew Tate and Clinton Solomon. Here's the kickoff after the score. Bennett's from his five has to turn around and find some place to run and he's not going to do it leaving his feet that way. Let's check in with Mike Leeson. Hey Craig check this out. Troy Smith's roommate is a guy by the name of Ted Ginn Jr. Finally finds him on a little slant. Not sure about the tackling there by Michigan State but Ginn's off to the races and the Buckeyes lead it. Ginn almost single handedly beat Michigan State last year. Brian Calhoun another touchdown for the former Colorado Buffalo. And right now it is 20 to 17 Gophers by three over the Badgers. Craig. Mike, thanks very much. Some entertaining football going on in the Big Ten. Indiana starting deep in their own territory. Taylor, not a whole lot of room at all. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's take a look now at the Big Ten standings. We saw two big games that Mike was talking about. Plus this one here, Iowa and Indiana in that upper bracket of the Big Ten. The winner stays there. And this road test for Indiana becoming a little bit tougher now to start out the third quarter. And you look at the Michigan State, Ohio State in the bottom of your Big Ten right there, but a lot of room to move up as those two teams are two of your better ones. Indiana started flat on their first series of the second half. Iowa came out with a bang. And here's a big pass play over to Thigpen now to pick up the first down for Indiana. Craig, let's go back and look at the touchdown. You wonder why a guy gets so wide open. Watch these two defensive backs as the receivers crisscross. Both defensive backs take the guy going to the outside, and the inside receiver runs wide open in the middle of the field. Give Drew Tate credit, though, keeping his eyes down the field, picking up that blown coverage and making a play out of it. He knew he had to spin away one last time to get himself free to make that pass. I have said a couple of times, I think he does the best job of any quarterback in the Big Ten, keeping his eyes down the field as he scrambles around, and that's why he has so many big plays. Washington, no place to go with the combination of Greenway and Hodge. Terry Hepner in his Indiana offense, they know what Iowa is giving them. That's the underneath things. That's the things that require the patience. When you're down 24 to 7, 
you know you probably aren't going to get the big play. It makes every short one that much more important. You're going to have to convert on your short attempts in order to keep and sustain drives. Third and 11. I should say second and 11, and this one complete. And out of bounds. Got some of those yards back. Johnson on defense. You don't see the tight end real involved in this spread offense. And I think for the spread offense to really perform at its optimum, you're going to have to get the tight end involved. Matt O'Neill, good hands, a little better receiver than the other tight ends. But I don't think that's something Indiana's quite comfortable yet with, is getting their tight end involved. He's the junior out of Terre Haute, second reception of the game. Sets up third down and short. Straight ahead goes Powers to pick up the first down. Keep it simple, pick up the first down in that case. I'm not sure Iowa was lined up properly defensively. There was a huge void between the left shoulder of the center and the left tackle. Iowa had no defensive player lined up there. And if Blake Powers saw that, all he needed to do was favor his left side and he was going to get a huge push. And I think that's exactly why they picked up a long one and a half, two yards on a quarterback street. First down keeps the drive alive. Right up the middle, nice hole. Good gainer for Indiana. Let's check in with Mike Leeson. We've seen three cut-ins in the last two minutes, and the terrible tackling going on in the Big Ten is just obvious as you've seen simple plays that ought to be short gains turn into huge touchdowns. And the second down and three, Washington. Maybe a yard. Let's check in with Quint Kesnick. Craig, this week we spent some time with Coach Hefner. He talked about James Hardy, how his confidence is absolutely sky high right now, and that's carrying over off the field. His personality is opening up. He's coming out of the shell. Uh, very likable and magnetic kid. He says he's still improving on the field in four areas. Understanding the game physically, clearly he's put on 30 pounds. He will get faster, and he's still developing chemistry with Blake Powers. That's right. Coach Hefner said, you know, he finally realized, wow, I can really do this in his redshirt freshman season. On third down. Well, they're so going to catch or not. It is ruled a catch. It would be a first down just over the 40 yard line by Thigpen. They're going to rule it a catch. That ball looked in live action like it skipped well, in there. It sure did. And I didn't see a call made, but that's going to be the call here. See if they take a look at this here at the last second. Indiana trying to hustle up. I think Blake Powers knows that he needs to get this playoff quickly. And he does. Play stands first down. Taylor. And suddenly things opening up on the ground. So Chris Taylor gets the good gainer. We talked about James Hardy and what he brings to this Indiana passing game. Take a look at some of these plays that he makes. Now, a lot of the stuff has been underneath, but look at those catches, laying his body out, sacrificing his body and using it to get position and come down with the ball. I have been more and more impressed each and every week with the progress this young kid has made. Boy, he is a special one. Uh, we're watching here at Indiana, the Big Ten. Nearly picked off by Johnson, but yet Hardy at the same time nearly makes the reception. Uh, you got to keep your concentration and make that catch. Javon Johnson starting his 34th game today in his career, gambles and goes for the interception. Take a look at how far off to the inside Johnson is. There's the gamble. Oh boy, if Hardy could have somehow come up with that catch, and it was a harder catch from that view than I first thought. That could have been six for Indiana. Instead, it's third down and three. Powers tosses, pass complete, another first down for the Hoosiers. This one over to James Bailey. So after the very, very slow start, back at their own five-yard line, open up the second half. Hoosiers are trying to answer a quick score by Iowa and get back in this game. And you can clearly see what the defensive scheme of Norm Barker and the Hawkeyes is to keep those receivers in front of you, Make them go 95 yards. We've got a 24 to 7 lead. Don't give up the quick big play. Make them go the length of the field and chew up some time. First to 10. I 
Iowa 45. Powers looks downfield. Hardy open. And he can't even catch that one as it sails over his head. And a flag comes in. And this is likely to be a late hit, Randy. And a good flag and a good call by the official over there. Ball clearly over his head. Hardy clearly out of bounds. And an unnecessary hit. Good call by the official there. Marcus Pascal guilty of the personal foul. And we saw one in the first half that could have been called on Grossfield of Indiana. That ball, late hit, number 25 on the defense. Kurt Ferentz told us yesterday there are acceptable penalties and unacceptable ones. Take a look at how late that ball, that hit happens. Totally unnecessary. And Marcus Pascal gets flagged for it, rightfully so. Last couple of drives here, one on Iowa offensively, one defensively. Those foolish penalties that Kirk Ferentz hates to see have happened against his team, both personal fouls. First down at the 30 of Iowa, 13th play of this drive. Big pin on the reverse. And well covered out there by Chad Greenway. Only two, maybe three yards on the gainer. Oh, what a good play by Chad Greenway. You haven't called his name a lot because the spread offense is going to take your linebackers out of a lot of the action. But a nice job, good feet by Greenway to be able to bring Dick Pitt down. Generally, you run a reverse like that, Craig. It takes longer to set up, and you've got to show you're going one way to draw the defense. That happened so bang, bang, Iowa's defense didn't have time to react. Whistle comes in, stops play, and a timeout called by the Hawkeyes. So we've seen this game, a lot of timeouts burned so far for regrouping or whatnot, but uh, this time the Hawkeyes take the timeout. They only had 10 men on the field, so a good timeout there. We're going to step aside and come back to Iowa City. Right, thanks very much. They only had one call back to shoot out up north. Well, I tell you, Wisconsin's defense has given up more big plays this year than maybe the last couple of years together. Powers throws one up. Will Hardy catch it? He does. Was he inbounds? He was. What a one-handed grab. And now it's going to be overruled out of bounds. Craig, I think that's a good call. I think Hardy's right foot came down out of bounds before the left one was inbounds as he caught the ball. Spectacular effort, nonetheless. Boy, it was a heck of an effort by Powers to get. Watch and see if the right foot doesn't come down out of bounds first. I uh, can't okay, tell, obviously, tell from there. that angle. Take a look here. See if that right foot's not out of bounds. Oh, boy. No, it's that's not. That's it catch. is not. That should be a catch from that angle. And We're going to get it reviewed. Terry Hepner is very adamant across the other sideline, of course, but he just wants somebody to look at the play, and that's going to happen. The line judge was adamant, and he saw, in my opinion, the same thing I saw. I thought the right foot came down first out of bounds before the ball even got there, and therefore the player takes him, himself out of play. That right foot from that angle clearly looked in bounds, and it was a heck of a catch. Take a look from here. It's the right foot that's going to come down first because there's no doubt the left one is in, and he is in bounds with that right foot. And then he drags the left knee. So it was a great job of concentration and coming back to catch the ball. The right foot is clearly in. There's the ball in his hand. And the left knee it really is irrelevant because the right foot was in bounds when he caught the ball. Yep, he had the ball in bounds. So I, I think this should be over ruled, overturned, and it should be Indiana ball with a completion and a first down. What a play by Hardy, coming back and concentrating. And I'm impressed with the strength this young kid has, upper body, to fight off those defenders and make one-handed catches. Well, if he uh, discovered the wow factor, as his head coach told us this week, we're, he, we're seeing one big game. There's indisputable video evidence that there was a catch at the seven yard line. First down, Indiana. Good call. It was a good job stopping it, and it was a good call by the officials to overturn that. 
Time now for the Red Roof Inn Red Zone proficiency. Save at Red Roof Inns with Red's Hot Deals. First down to goal for the seven. Indiana today in the Red Zone. One for one with the touchdown. That's what it's all about, getting six. And they have come into this game 14 of their last 15 trips to the Red Zone. So they struggled early in the year, but lately they have been on fire. 6.39 to go in the third quarter. Trailing 24 to 7. Taylor gets the call. Tries to find some running room. Gets inside the five. Stretches down to the four yard line. Abdul Hodge on the stop. That pass play, by the way, good for 18 yards to set up first down and goal. Well, this is such a different Indiana football team. Terry Hepner has got them believing in themselves. They are a very well disciplined team. And they are making some plays, and I really like what Terry Etner's done with his Indiana team, both offensively and defensively. And they are bringing themselves back into this game with a good, sound, solid drive. 16th play of the drive. Taylor. Not quite enough to get to the end zone. Stop near the one. It'll be third down and goal from there. This all gets set up because the third replay is overturn of the game. Craig, I think if Terry Hepner knows he's going to go for it on fourth down, he may throw the ball here because you know you can come back and run on fourth down. If they throw the ball here, he may be deciding that if it's not good, or excuse me, if they run it here, he's deciding we're going to go for the three. That's generally the tendency that you have. We'll see what they do. 18th play of the drive. Pass over the middle. Juggled and caught for the touchdown. And who else? James Hardy on the reception. And Indiana strikes back. I think that tells you a little bit about what Terry Hepner's thinking. Throwing the ball there, in my opinion. He knew he was going to go for it on fourth down if they didn't make it. But what a nice job by Hardy, keeping his body between the ball and the defender. That's a big body for a defensive back to have to go through to get that ball. And when you can use that to your advantage, he did a nice job. And you talked about his hands earlier. Boy, oh boy. You know, it's got to be from catching that basketball so many times in the drills he does because he's got very soft hands for a guy as big as he is who's as young as he is. The extra point is good. That brings Indiana back within 10 now. Iowa still leads at 24 to 14, but James Hardy in those hands. A couple of big, big catches, including the finale here, the touchdown. 24 to 14. There's James Hardy on the sideline for Indiana. His touchdown brings the Hoosiers within 10 here with 5.11 to go. Time now for the BMW ultimate drive of the game. And this young man caps off an 18-play, 94-yard drive that ate 7.33 off the clock with his one-yard touchdown reception. And Hardy, the first receiver in IU history to record back-to-back 10-plus -back catch games and the only receiver in Indiana history to reach 100 yards in five of his first six games on the season. He has 11 for 137 and a touchdown so far in this contest. And it's not all the receivers. Somebody's got to be getting him the ball, and Powers is doing a nice job, and Powers is getting good time to throw. Nice job by that offensive line. Fumble on the return, ball still loose. It looks like Indiana may have it. Yeah, they do. Indiana comes up with the turnover. First turnover of the game, and Indiana set up an ideal position. Will Myers comes up with that recovery, it looks like, and he was given the game ball last week because he had a fumble recovery and an interception in last week's game. Kirk Ferentz can see this momentum coming away from him a little bit. Take a look now at the Cooper Tire defensive stop of the game, and it comes on special teams on the kick return, the fumble and the recovery. Amy and Sims here just holding the ball out a little far from his body, and it was the defender from the outside that just hit the ball perfectly and forced it out. Will Myers came up with the fumble recovery, and that sets up first down and 10 for Indiana at the 23-yard line of Iowa. So that offense red hot after a 94-yard touchdown drive. Goes right to the end zone again. This one looks like it's picked off. And it is. 
Adam Shane has got it for Iowa. And just that fast, the turn of events, and the Hawkeyes get it back. Veteran disciplined football teams, especially defensively, know how to react to sudden change. All of a sudden, they fumble the kickoff. They're right back on the field. They've been in that situation before. They're a disciplined, disciplined defensive football team, and they come up with a big play right there. Adam Shada, who had gotten burned on the previous touchdown, comes up with a play right there on a very poor, poorly thrown ball by Blake Powers. First and 10 Hawkeyes from their 20. There's some running room out there for Young. Gets about five. Take one more look. Take a look. You got a receiver that is six foot seven. Throw the ball high. Let your receiver use that height. This was a poorly underthrown ball, and it nullified the height advantage that his receiver had. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You take away your best threat right there. We talked about sudden change for Iowa. They responded. Now this Indiana defense out here. Six seniors in their front seven starters. How are they going to respond? Tate rolls, looking downfield, has to run. Puts his head down and gets up close to the first down. Going to be marked just a tad shy, so it'll be third down and short. Mike Leeson. Back to live action here in Iowa City. Indiana's defense coming up big on third down and less than a yard. Boy, that defense is tough to run against, especially with their senior linebackers that are as quick as they are. All three of them are seniors, and that's a key defensive stand right there. Third and one, that Iowa offensive line usually picks that up. So Pinozo, Will Myers in on the stop, and a big, big defensive stop. I think Indiana is a little confused with personnel on the field and needed to burn a timeout. That doesn't make that man very happy over on the sideline. They only had 10 out there on special teams, and Iowa was forced to do that earlier in this quarter. Again, now those Big Ten standings, how important this game is, and the game Mike just updated us on, Northwestern out in front again big. Everyone climbing, clawing for positioning. Minnesota and Wisconsin playing right now. Iowa and Indiana, of course, here. Indiana at four and one, their first goal is to get bowl eligible. And they felt if they could come in here and steal a win here, that that would put them in great position because they have a tough schedule remaining. And every win is going to be very important to uh, Terry Hepner and a coach trying to rebuild that program. Iowa has lost 14 consecutive Big Ten road games, while Iowa's won 14 consecutive Big Ten home games. Indiana's lost 14 consecutive. Iowa has won. Rosefield. Can't elude the second tackler, and then a flag comes in. may pin the Hoosiers back even further. 57 yard punt. Fenstermaker does his job. The last time Indiana had the ball they went 95 yards so they may be in the same position again backed up against their own end zone. And they will. Maker. That was a career long 57 yard punt. Let's go back and look at the last Indiana touchdown, the pass to Hardy. Generally, you want inside position. This is a different way of getting it. Looked as though he's going to block, and then he comes out and runs a quick slant. Shada got his hand in there. Watch, there's the attempt. There's the relaxation by Shada. But watch him get his left arm in there and does hit the ball, and Hardy has good concentration to come down with it, though. You don't often see a fake run block and then run a pass route. Hardy not in there. This series to open up. 
Instead, they go to the tight end, Matt O'Neill, makes his third catch. Let's check in now with Quinn Kesnick. Craig, uh, James, Hart James Hardy's physical transformation at Indiana has been incredible. He came in as a freshman weighing 185 pounds. He weighs 215 right now. He's put on 30 pounds. He's got 5% body fat. He has increased his strength in the bench press and squat by over 100 pounds in each of those disciplines. Uh, he eats, according to a certain formula, 24 calories per pound of body weight, and he is all business in the weight room, correct? Those numbers throw me off, Randy. <laughs> Great. You don't need 24 calories per pound of body weight. No, I don't look at anything per anything except what's on the plate. Well, we saw him down on the field before the game went up, had a nice conversation with him, and if he's got 5% body fat, I don't know where it is. That's for sure, boy. He is, he is cut. He is an athlete. I think the fact that he is so physical as a young receiver, the fact that he plays basketball and he's used to that contact in the Big Ten, even though it was only for one year, I think that helps him as a receiver. Third down and three from their own 11 yard line. Powers throws. Bailey's got it. First down. A big conversion there for Indiana. They have practically owned the time of the entire third quarter. Well, it's a good play by Powers. Once again, Iowa forcing him to have the patience to take the underneath stuff. Little crisscross by the outside receivers. Hardy going to the outside this time. Bailey on the inside. Powers wisely chooses the open receiver first when you only need three yards. Now with a little more breathing room, see if Indiana wants to open it up. Barnard at the 18. This time they go to the ground. Washington, the carrier, gets up to the 20 yard line, so he gets two. Hodge the stop for Iowa. And that Iowa defense has been on that field for most of the third quarter. And it's much more tiring when your defense is out on the field than your offense because your defense is chasing people. Indiana's offense out there almost 30 minutes. That's that Iowa defense is getting tired and they're, they're responding and reacting a little slower to the Indiana receivers. Greater than two to one. Short gainer, let's check in with Mike Leeson. Thing like that, guys. No, he didn't, but boy, didn't it help. All that play and athleticism to be able to display that. This one, however, to him won't go. Wayne Hardy came down on his, what looked like his left leg in a very awkward position, and he is still down on the ground. Didn't make a valiant effort jumping up for the ball. He's on the outside, and the ball's well overthrown. But watch how he comes down right there. Something wasn't right, wasn't comfortable, and it looks like he's been holding his left, left knee, left leg. Something got tweaked, you gotta believe. Yeah, it's good to, see power. good to see him up and walking around. And yeah. Certainly must have stunned something or something was out of sync because he has been a major, major player and Indiana could ill afford to lose him. Absolutely not. Those are numbers just from this game. 11 for 137. He's made some tremendous catches. Indiana forced to punt. Johnson from his 40. Straight ahead. Gets tackled just inside Indiana territory. 38 yard punt, 11 yard return as they continue to work on James Hardy. He's grimacing down there on that sideline. Well, it looked as though his right leg was the one that was a little out of form when he came down. It first looked like he was holding his left leg, but the last replay looked like his right side was the one that was a little more awkward. And at least he was up over his own power. And He'll get a little chance to get some attention. Tate looks downfield, throws, pass is complete. First down. Matt Malloy. Now, Drew Tate, at only six foot tall, generally needs to move out of the pocket to be most effective. And he has really gotten into a comfort zone, throwing the ball on the run. Whether to the right or the left, he throws the ball as well on the run as he does from the pocket. This will be the final play of the third quarter. Take the handoff, Young trying to pick his spot. Makes something out of nothing.
nothing. Gets a good five, maybe six yards down to the 29 yard line. Tackled by Tracy Porter. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. We're coming back to Iowa City right after this. It has been a tremendous first three quarters of football here in Iowa City. 24-14 as the faithful in Kirk we trust here in Iowa. Home team up by 10. They've got the football second down and four. Fumble, and it looks like the Hoosiers get it back. It has been turnover central here in the second half after a very clean first half. Second turnover for Indiana. Looked like Albert Young was just trying to make his cut before he had a firm grip of the ball. I don't think anybody from Indiana forced that ball out. Looked like a clean handoff, and no, Albert Young just lost it on his own before any Indiana player got a hand on it. Kyle Killian smothered it to give Indiana the ball back. That's a big turnover there because Iowa was knocking on Indiana's door. See the turnovers now all in the second half. Josiah Sears gets the carry. Seldom used fullback carrying the football as we take a look at our game recap. Hardy and Powers with the big numbers and a tremendous advantage on the clock for Indiana. And one of the reasons they've got that time of possession advantage is because Iowa and Drew Tate have been making their hay through big plays. When you're making big plays, some of them ending up in touchdowns, you aren't going to have the ball that long. Gain of only one, second down and nine. Shotgun heavy rush screen. Taylor, nowhere to go. Forced out of bounds by Chad Greenway. But this Iowa defense is a disciplined group, aren't they? They just know where to stay. They stay in their alleys. They take good angles, and very seldom are they outnumbered when you get to the flank. There are too many black jerseys over there, and it's just hard for a back from Indiana to get any open space. James Hardy back in the game for Indiana. Very positive sign there. It looked like he was injured a moment ago. Third down and nine. Four receivers. Powers in trouble. And we'll get flagged for that one. That ball never crossed the line of scrimmage. So intentional grounding. The penalty is a moot point as the the penalty will just be lost of down at the spot. So it's the same as a sack. Second time though, Craig, this Iowa defense has stood up to a sudden change situation. This time they get pressure on Powers for one of the few times in the game. And Indiana had some receivers open deep, had Powers had time to throw the ball, but a good defensive stand forcing Indiana to a three and out after that fumble. Daniel Webema on the pressure, loss of 11. He need a punt. So the two turnovers that Indiana got, they went straight out. A long time to punt that one away. Fair catch called at the 42-yard line by Johnson. 35-yard punt. Let's take a look at our Liberty Mutual the play Kirk of the Burns game. Has with this Iowa football team. Well, you take a look at Drew Tate making away. something happen and then getting the ball deep into the end zone there to his receiver, and that was how Iowa opened the second half. And they have uh, hung on here with the 24-14 lead. They've got the football back in great field position at their own 42. They're trying to stick to the ground. Young, big holes. He powers his way up over midfield and gets about eight yards up to the 50. So now Iowa going with that ground control game. Their defense has been out on that field an awful lot here in the second half. But with a 10-point lead, this is where he clinched things. Well, and this is where the pressure goes to that offensive line, which has always been the strength of an Iowa football team, is their line play. And this is where you need to say, guys, it's time for you to take over. Let's run the ball and give our defense a rest. And again, trying to turn the corner. 
Did he get enough for the first down? Tracy Porter pushes him out. And, out by Tracy Porter. and it's going to be close. I think, I think he's going to have the first down here just by about half a yard. The first down, and Iowa's drive continues. You know, this is important, too, if you're Indiana defensively, especially the way they like to bring their safeties up to the line of scrimmage. This is a typical situation of where Kirk Ferentz and Iowa like to play action and then go for the home run ball, and Indiana has bit on some of that play action earlier in this game. Off the 47 of Indiana. Fake the run, goes right downfield on the play action, looking for Solomon. And nearly had him, covered there by Tracy Porter. We're at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Indiana, and Iowa battling here this afternoon in Big Ten play. Along with Randy Reich, Quint Kesnick on the sideline. I'm Craig Kishon. And Kinnick Stadium, home to a 21-game home winning streak. Last loss for the Hawkeyes as they try to stretch it to 22 against their in-state rival Iowa State back in the 2002 season. Well, that was that great Iowa football team that lost to Seneca Wallace in all Iowa State back there. That That's was right. a real shot. Danny again looks downfield. This one nearly picked off. Grossfield had a chance, couldn't haul it down. So Tate looking downfield on his last two passes for some big plays. Well, we talked about Iowa trying to go for the home run. Indiana defended it very well. Good step for man for man coverage and not an open receiver. That last play right there looked like Drew Tate had his man open and just threw a poor pass. A little surprise they were going for the two big passes. They had the ground yeah, game going. You know what? That's typical of what Kirk Ferentz likes to do, though, is you get a think and run and then you go for a big play. That snap, Tate's got it. Trying to find some running room and gets run out of bounds. So it's going to be fourth down. Victor Adianju chases him out. And he's obviously not happy. Well, so often when you get a poor snap, it disrupts things to the point where the quarterback that time scrambled to his right. All of his receivers were going to the left. Tate knew that, and he didn't have anybody over there on that side of the field to throw the ball to. Fenster Maker. Lofts one up. This might be a little too much, and it is. So it'll be a touchback back at the 20-yard line, 50-yard boot, but they get 20 back when we come back. And there's a look at the Hawkeye faithful here in Iowa City. They're part of that 21-game winning streak. We'll visit that when we come back. The Indiana Band is here in Iowa City. They made the trip. Hoosiers down, however, by 10. They've got the football at 12.50 to go here in the ball game as Blake Powers brings his offense out. First and 10 at their own 20. Taylor in the backfield. Check that Washington fakes the handoff to him. Downfield wide open Hardy at the 50, 40, 30, 20. And finally knocked out of bounds inside the 15. They'll mark him at the 14 yard line. He was wide open for a 66 yard game. What a nice job of play action by Blake Powers. That freezes that safety. And then as Powers came to his right, Hardy's coming all the way from the left side and continues to run. Hardy doesn't slow down thinking Powers doesn't see him. He continues to stay with his route. And a nice job of Indiana taking advantage of the missed coverage. 12 receptions, 203 yards. Easily career highs for him. First and 10 at the 14. Washington, all kinds of room. Finally gets hauled down at the six yard line. Let's check in with Mike Leeson. Boy, got some ball games brewing here today so far. Washington again gets the call. Fighting to get that first down. It's going to be close. Looks like he might be just a little bit short. Craig, you just kind of feel in watching the Indiana offense running the football, their backs are running with a little more determination here in the second half. Maybe it's because the holes are bigger, or I was thinking pass, and they're a little softer, but there's certainly more determination and more success on the ground for the Hoosiers in this second half. We're going to mark 
him just shy, so it's going to be third down. Less than a yard. Washington stays there. Powers takes a snap, tries to go straight ahead. Looks like he has enough to pick up the first down. They've used the quarterback sneak effectively here three times in this game. With a quarterback 6'4", 235 pounds, that's a good weapon to have. Don't think he got it on his first effort. It was second and third effort that brought him over the line. Mitch King comes limping off for Iowa. First down and goal, Indiana trailing by 10. All kinds of time left here in the fourth quarter, however. They trailed 24 to 7 at one point in the second half. Power straight ahead again. From the four yard line, gets maybe two. Abdul Hodge the stop. As we revisit a look at the Big Ten standings, Iowa and Indiana battling right now for that fourth spot. Well, especially with Minnesota and Wisconsin playing each other, one of those two teams will lose. Penn State a tough game at Ann Arbor, so the winner of this game really looks to position themselves well. Minnesota, Michigan State, Northwestern all leading in their games right now. Second down and goal from the two. Powers gives it to Washington. Is he in? I think he's just shot. And he will be marked about the one foot yard line or closer. But not a touchdown. Good surge by the Indiana offensive line. I think this is four down territory for Terry Hepner, even though they're down by 10. And a field goal still gives you a one play difference. I think you got to go for it if you don't make it here on third down. But it looks like he had got in originally. Where he came down, it looked like he was in. But clearly they marked him short and right up next to the goal line. And Iowa calls the timeout. Noah Parker wants to set up his defense. His security defense down there. Powers have been very successful with the sneak. Short yardage and goal line is generally an attitude, and it's an attitude by your offensive line. Indiana, a veteran, experienced offensive line. Iowa, a young, inexperienced defensive line. For Indiana, the Hoosiers trailing in this game, trying to become bowl eligible. Here's a look at their remaining schedule. All right, and that's not an easy schedule. Ohio State at home, at Michigan State, at home against Minnesota, at Michigan. And then, of course, the big one at Purdue, it, with Purdue, at Bloomington, the last game of the year. Need to win two of those games, including today's, to get bowl eligible. And Terry Hepner trying to erase that history. You saw a lot of losses against those teams yet. Off to a four and one start, best start by a team at Indiana since 1994. Team started five and one. Regardless of how Indiana does today, Terry Hefner is making a lot of people forget about past Indiana football. This team is much improved and the excitement is overflowing and his team believes in, in him and what they're teaching right now. Now it's up to Mangero, Hines, Souls, Hatcher, Fry, the big guys up front. Ball rest just outside of the goal line. Will Powers get the call? There's movement on the offensive line. Well, Iowa moved first. If the call is encroachment, then it'll go against Iowa. Clearly, the Indiana left side moved. Wow, it's on Indiana. That is huge. It, it, absolutely. And the last thing you tell your team in the huddle if you're a quarterback and after the timeout on the sideline is don't move there's no reason to move left side of the screen of the left yeah left side of your screen there the left tackle and tight end both moved early and Rodenovich getting an earful the tight end from his head coach instead of third down and a foot it's now third down and five not only does it affect this call but also a potential fourth down call out of the shotgun, Powers looks to pass. Lost one into the end zone. Bailey! Does he have a touchdown? Indiana. Back of the end zone. A great job with the footwork. Maybe 
the best throw Blake Powers has made today because he took something off of it. He threw it to the perfect spot, and he anticipated where Bailey was going to go. And even though it was only a five-yard pass, may have been the most impressive throw Blake Powers has made. James Bailey, his third touchdown of the season. And Indiana making a statement here on the road. This is a team that last year after a penalty like that may have collapsed. This year, come right back and make the play. And the extra point is good, and we have ourselves a three-point game with 9.51 to go. Iowa's lead once, 24-7. Now down 24-21. Bailey in the back of the end zone. Brings him closer. All right, Mike and John, thanks for the update in the Big Ten. We've got a thriller going on here in Iowa City. Hawkeyes have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Jones gets the call. Not a whole lot of room. Let's take a look again at that touchdown catch by Bailey. What a great job by Blake Powers taking something off of this and throwing it to a spot. But what a wonderful catch by Bailey. Watch that left foot. Boy, is that close to the end line? Holy cow, how he kept that thing in bounds and still could concentrate on the catch going up to get the ball. Craig, this is where Iowa needs to be able to do a couple things. Number one, run the ball and set an attitude. And number two, if you're Drew Tate, don't be thinking big play all the time. It's ball control, it's possession. Take the underneath stuff if it's there. Wide open, he's got his tight end, Chandler. And he's finally tripped up. Of course, if it's not there, you can go for the big play as well. You can't miss that one. Well, single coverage, no free safety. As Chandler makes a move and Mitchell falls down, that's an easy pitch and catch to an uncovered tight end. Let's go down to Quint Kesnick. We'll check in with Quint in a moment. First down and 10, 37-yard pickup at the 41-yard line of Indiana. Young doing some dancing down there, picks up about four, maybe five yards. Now let's go down to Quint. Craig, Iowa has a 21-game home winning streak, and part of the home field advantage here are the people. They are right on top of the Indiana bench. They're sitting about five yards from the field. I'm going to step away. You're going to see how close these Iowa fans are to the Indiana bench. They're practically in some of their uh, meetings when the offensive line comes off. They are an oppressive uh, force here behind the visitors. 21 straight for the Hawkeyes. A lot of scouts back there. People calling plays, I'm sure. <laughs> Suggesting go. plays. Depending on which sideline you're on. Second down and five. Tate looks downfield. Finds his open receiver. He's got him out there. Another first down. And there is a flag down on the play. Defensive holding. There's your active home winning streaks. Iowa trying to make it 22 as they cling to a three-point lead. Boise State in Southern Cal. The top two, Boise State at home today. Southern Cal, of course, at Notre Dame later. Of course, if you're Indiana here, you you would like to give up no points, but giving up three. 34 on the defense. 10 yards. First down. Giving up three is a whole world better than giving up seven. Three points still keeps you within a touchdown of taking the lead. So you can play a little bit softer. You don't have to be in an all-out gamble mode, but it's vital you keep them out of the end zone. Three points doesn't kill you if you're Indiana. Absolutely. Pinozo, the guilty party for Indiana. Ball will be marked at the 25-yard line of the Hoosiers. First and 10, Iowa. Take the handoff. Young's got some room. Turns the corner. He's going to get in for six. Touchdown, Iowa. 26 yard run by Albert Young. Almost a replay of the touchdown he had in the first half. When you need something to happen, 
coaches like to think players and not plays. And this was a great chance to see a player make a play. That was the off tackle run and Albert Young had the patience and the vision to let it develop and then the acceleration to get that ball through the hole and into the end zone. And the extra point is good. And that 10 point lead is back for the Hawkeyes. 31 to 21. Only four plays in 80 yards. But the Hawkeyes get it back. Not a lot of time left in that game. Do you, you think Michigan State will spend a little time this week on special teams and tackling? Boy. That may be all they do this week. Indiana now. Still plenty of time on that clock. 8.02 to go, but it's all about score now. And with their offense, the way you spread things out, they can stay in their rhythm, but they can't drop balls. They can't have negative yardage plays like that one right there. There is the sack. And Iowa's defense in there, Madison and Kroll. And again, Young now on the score, Randy. What a nice job of setting things up inside, then outside, right there, using his block from his wide receiver. And boy, does this guy have some acceleration and some quickness to him. It doesn't take long for him to run from spot A to spot B. Two-yard loss on the sack. Powers hasn't felt the pressure a whole lot in this game, but does there. Now the draw to Taylor, nothing doing. Brian Madison on the stop for Iowa. Indiana trying to break this string of 14 consecutive Big Ten road losses. Have to climb out of the 10-point hole to do it. Indiana 15 out of 23 on third down conversions. Powers throws Bailey out there, and he does not make the reception inbounds. That one sailed a little bit on Powers, and now it's fourth and 11. Well, fourth and 11, too far to go for it. You've got to put some pressure on your defense. Punt this ball away and hope your defense can make a stop. Not a big enough zone right there for Powers to get the ball to his receiver. Just good coverage, good positioning by that Iowa secondary. Beating a punt for Indiana. Johnson. I was going to come out of there with good field position. They'll take over at their own 41 yard line. Let's check in with Mike Leeson. You are kidding me. You block a punt <laughs> with 30 some seconds to go to win the game. Holy cow. And with a little help from their friends up there. Special teams, yeah. uh, you're seeing it today, are playing such a huge part of each and every game. Young breaks free. We got a flag. Maybe a face mask. That's going to be the call against Indiana. A look maybe to Tracy Porter. Resting the face mask. Number nine. On the defense. All right, so the penalty on Indiana, and we are told, updated up in uh, Minnesota, that Minnesota fumbled the kickoff, Wisconsin recovered, so it's their ball with about 20 seconds to go and a four point lead. And you know, that was a key game for both teams in that the way those teams played last week. Wisconsin loses that game, their season could go right down the hill with two tough losses. Now Wisconsin looked like they're going to win that game. Minnesota off of the high of their victory at Michigan to lose at home against the Badgers, knowing their history the last couple of years. And they've really got to be questioning themselves as well. So on first down and two because of the face mask penalty, Young picks up the easy first down again. That'll just keep the chains moving and the clock going here when they reset the ball. 
thing Terry Hepner can't do to get it back. Indiana, we showed the graphic a few minutes ago, lost 14 consecutive Big Ten road games. That's not going to be long. They're, they're going to break that streak pretty soon. This team, uh, regardless of who they play, this team is competitive and can be competitive each and every week. They've got a defense that can stop the run. They've got a, a veteran group of good leaders, and they've got some playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. Blake Powers is only going to continue to get better, and they are young at the skill position, old and veteran at the line position, but this team looks like they're going to be competitive each and every week the rest of the season. That's what Terry Hepner was telling us the other day, their, their previous Big Ten road game, the loss at Wisconsin. He said the big thing there is he didn't think his club failed in that game. They, they didn't win, but it wasn't a step backwards. Right. And I think he's going to be proud of the effort and some of the plays that, that his players made today. Young breaks free. Nearly breaks another touchdown there, but he is tripped up by Will Myers. Gain of 13 nonetheless. And the drive continues. We are in Iowa City for our Big Ten game between the Hawkeyes and the Indiana Hoosiers. Kinnick Stadium, along with Randy Wright, Quint Kesnick, I'm Craig Kashan. We've enjoyed it here this afternoon as the winning streak trying to stretch to 22 for Kurt Ferentz and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, what a job Kurt Ferentz has done. Just he always shows up with a good, strong, disciplined football team. Maybe the best tackling team, as we've referred to, the best tackling team in the Big Ten, player for player. There goes Sims into the end zone, touchdown. Damian Sims. Albert Young did all the hard work, and then they brought in the sophomore, and he just busted free for the touchdown. And it looks like that'll be the clincher with 4.18 to go. Well, Terry Hepner said the problems Indiana had at Wisconsin, too many big plays. They couldn't shut Wisconsin down. Same thing today. Played very well for majority of the game defensively. Too many big plays, though, and that against a good team, you're not going to survive that. You're not going to win when that happens. try is there that extends Iowa's lead now to a more comfortable 38 21 for the Hawkeye fans a 30 yard scamper for Damian Sims you know, it's just a poor job of tackling a nice job nice hole right there and just too much acceleration bad attack angles and good quickness by Damian Sims and just the missed tackles you can't afford to have Sims had the two longest touchdown runs of the season for Iowa, 66 and 39. So he's got that uh, burst ability, if you will. And Sims was a player that got a lot of activity last year with all the injuries that Iowa had to their running backs. Sims stepped up and got a lot of opportunity last year. Now you've got Albert Young back, you've got Marcus Schnorr, you've got Sean Green. Uh, you've got some guys like that that have really stepped up today. It's been Albert Young. But Sims has kind of been the forgotten guy this year. So it's 418 to go. Down by 17, the Indiana Hoosiers. Gotta hope for something big and fast and see if they get it from Bennett on the return. That's his best return of the game up to the 35-yard line. 31-yard return. And it looks like he's very slow to get up. He is banged up on that return. And the training staff at uh, Indiana trying to shield the sun from his eyes so they can communicate with him. He really hasn't moved since he was tackled. No, it is. Iowa's done a nice job of not letting Bennett become a factor today. One of the best return guys in the Big Ten, but Iowa, with the way they've kicked off, really have taken him out of the game. Bennett really was a weapon last year on returns, 94 and 98-yard returns for touchdowns. He was fourth in the nation. 
30 yards on a return a year ago. This year, nearly at 32. So he is up and walking under his own power. Our player of the game brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. This guy's had a wild and productive game. James Hardy. 203 yards. He 12 only, catches. And he is only going to get better for a guy that is just really starting to feel comfortable and coming to his own. He's going to be some kind of good football receiver. He'll be a special one, no question about that. And a lot of season left for him and the Hoosiers. In the Big Ten. Powers slides, takes a lick, and flag comes in. Edmund Miles. Maybe the guilty party of a personal foul. I, I think you're right. It happened far too quick to be a face mask. I think they're going to flag him for head hunting or throwing a, a helmet to helmet or throwing a forearm. Leading with the helmet. Powers looked like he was pretty close to being in his slide, but again, that leading with the helmet, I mean, that's bottom line is. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And you should. And it's a good call. Those Both those flags came out quickly. The third personal foul against Iowa in this second half, and that is very unlike Kirk Ferentz and his team. Indiana's got it in Iowa territory. They're saying, hey, we're not done yet. Maybe down by 17. Powers has to tuck it away, chase to the sideline to stop the clock. And he gets out at the 41 yard line. Kroll chases him away. 308 to go. And that's something Blake Powers needs to learn to do a little more often is get out of bounds and get down. He is a big kid, 6'4, 235 pounds. He's got a big target for other players to hit. And he doesn't quite get down quickly enough. And we've seen him take some shots today. If he's going to play a full season in the Big Ten, he's going to learn to get down quicker. Down the handoff. Taylor. Down to the 35 yard line. Chad Greenway, the stop. That stops the clock at three minutes. And we looked at the Big Ten standings and the professor, Randy Wright, you clued us in a little bit earlier. Your midterm exams in the Big Ten. Well, I, I think if you look at most valuable player, a couple of good candidates, you got to look at somebody who's doing well, of course. Uh, a, a Michael Robinson who's at Penn State uh, Drew Stanton in Michigan State as well as he's been doing I think it's Brian Calhoun at Wisconsin he has finally gotten the passing game and the running backs on the same page at Wisconsin and for a team that really was not supposed to do very well offensively to score the kind of points that they're scoring you go right back to what Brian Calhoun has done for that team big game today they win up in the Metrodome Take a look at what he has done. He became the first player in Wisconsin history last week to have a 100-yard rushing and 100-yard receiving game in the same game. And uh, this guy, if he's not careful, he's going to get too good. He's going to leave Wisconsin and go into the NFL after this season. And he has really been impressive. Drew Stanton, a very close second, though. Has to Taylor. Tucks his head down to the 30-yard line. Edmund Miles the stop. Clock continues to roll. 220 and counting. Indiana down 17. How about biggest surprise team now as we continue our midterm grades in the uh, midterm grades of the Big Ten? Oh, I think biggest surprise team. Good surprise, hands down, Penn State. Nobody picture Penn State to do what they're doing and the way those freshmen have come in and contributed. For Penn State to be 6-0, Beat Ohio State at home with a quarterback of the wide receiver running back last year. Uh, that, that was an easy one for me. Downfield and incomplete inside the 10 yard line. Dale Merrick on the coverage for Iowa. Looking for Bailey. He's had a big game for Indiana. It's fourth down at five. Greg, you talk about the biggest surprise team, and I said in a good surprise, you look at Penn State. Biggest surprise from a player, I think, is Derek Williams. 
true freshman to come in there and add the explosiveness that he has done on the stage that he's done. He may not be playing the best of anybody in the Big Ten, but he's been the, the most pleasant surprise for a guy that's contributed in a winning situation. Fourth down, pass complete, Bailey's got it. Stays in bounds and brought down at the 10 yard line. So Indiana keeps it going. Johnson on the coverage, but not before Bailey picks up the first down. All right, you talked about the, the positive side of the surprise. What about the disappointment side? Uh, I think from a team, this was a very, very close and tight race. Uh, Michigan and Purdue are your two teams that, in my opinion, are your biggest disappointments. Right now, I pick Michigan because they were, at one point, number three in the country. Uh, today, Purdue gets beat again against Northwestern, or at least they were losing handedly later into the game. Uh, they're making a strong run at uh, overtaking Michigan for that. Does it kind of go to show that maybe those preseason rankings I mean, they just don't hold a lot of water right now, do they? Other than USC being well, number one, yeah. I don't think you can count on a lot other than that. And, and speaking of USC, what do you think about that game coming up? USC at Notre Dame. Well, there's, uh, I was surprised to see the pep rally uh, highlights on television from Notre Dame. I think maybe a little fuel to the fire as this one sails out of bounds. Well, unless they're going to play all 45,000 of those pep rally attendants in the game. It's going to be a tough chore for Notre Dame, even at home. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. All right, we've got uh, the professor making up a big list. He spent some, some time in the office last night. The midseason awards. You know, it's very close. you got a lot of players that can go up or down and, and a lot of candidates for each and every one. But that's the one right now. I think that those are the, those are the winners. Or losers, depending on winners which losers. category. That one intended for a thick pin, and it's fourth and goal now. This will be the 101st play of this game for Indiana. I'm not sure I ever remember that happening. And, you know, that's a good point. And talking about one of the things that was on the, the list of midterm grades was coach of the year. I took John L. Smith because of the schedule they played and the way they've done. Terry Hepner was a very close second with what he has done with a new system and a young, inexperienced quarterback, what they've been able to do. Very close second. Fourth and goal. This one sails incomplete. So Indiana's day is over. At one point trailing 24 to 7, they rally within 24 21. But Iowa showed their side when given the opportunity offensively, and then the defense doing just enough to win this game. Craig, you, you look at why Iowa is going to come out ahead here. They had some playmakers make some plays. Drew Tate, some of their receivers. Defensively, they did enough. So you look at that aspect. From an Indiana perspective, they just don't have the speed and the skill positions yet to be able to shut down the big plays. So the final play coming up here. And Iowa will improve to five and two overall. Three and one in the conference. And it's amazing time of possession and more than 100 plays run by Indiana time of possession basically 40 to 20 in the Hoosiers favor as the two head coaches meet as the final second ticks away here in Iowa City the Hawkeyes win over Indiana we're going to step aside and wrap things up when we come back to Iowa City again 38 21 Hawkeyes over the Hoosiers.